Welcome, everybody, to episode, what is it, 198? 199. One nine, is it 90, 199, really? Yeah, it is. Well, okay, then welcome to episode 199 of The China Show. China, it's, uh, living in the past. Hey, usual. you know, that's how it works, man. Uh, we're so happy to have you here, and we've got a jam-packed show for you today. We've got some very, very interesting topics. Yeah. And Would some, you care to name a couple? Uh, yeah, of course I could. Mm. Something like a massive, huge mass shooting in China that happened on New Year's Day, which of course is something that's been very hard to verify, and so we haven't uh, thought to cover it until today. We'll be getting on to that later in the show. We're going to be talking about uh, VW and the troubles that they're facing in China right now, yep. um, and the world actually, internationally, yeah. and of course the pork snout problem. Yeah, that's which a real huge. thing, by the way. And just as a teaser for that, there have been so few uh, economic indicators in China because they're shutting mm -hmm. everything yep. down about how you're not allowed to talk about how bad the economy is these days. Yep. That the, you know, analysts are having to find bizarre ways to figure out how the economy in China is actually doing. And they found a way to do it through pork prices. And it's actually crazy. It is. Uh, and we have for you probably one of the most ridiculous propaganda pushes from the Chinese government that we've seen in years. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, you're going <laughs> to probably. Buckle up. No, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It, you remember how, like, their propaganda stuff never slowed down, but the, mm -hmm. the, the jokes kind of slowed down from them. Yeah. Like, they stopped making ridiculously hilarious stuff because the quality got bad, but it got boring. Yeah. This is hilarious. Yeah. So you just. Basically, buckle buckle yeah, in for quite definitely. a wild ride today. So let's get right into it. We're going to saunter right into it with what's new. This is where we talk about what's new with regards to things happening in China. And we all know the New Year's, uh, Chinese New Year's, has just finished. It's like a, well, is it still maybe going on for another day or so? Because it's a 10-day affair. Yeah, it goes on forever. Yeah. So Basically, anyway. the way I see Chinese New Year's, it lasts half the year. <laughs> People <laughs> yeah, are always, I mean, like the way you greet people. Yeah. When it's like around New Year season, it continues. It just keeps going and going, doesn't it? Yeah. We thought we'd show you the aftermath of a of a Chinese New Year celebration. So you can see what to expect if you go to, um, you know, your average town just outside the outskirts of a big major city. Um, I mean, in the outskirts. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. yeah, in the outskirts of a major city. And that's that's a lot of stuff to clean up, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. What do you reckon? Well, there's a lot of people and a lot of festivities, but that is mountains and yeah, mountains of garbage um, and pollution. Th this is something that most people don't realize is that littering uh, is not frowned upon in China. Yeah. Uh, not like anywhere else. You know, when you litter, if you were to go into the public now, if we went outside and walked mm. around and we threw some trash mm. out in public, there's a good chance that somebody's going to call us out. Absolutely. Say, like, don't be a litter bug. Yeah. Stop you know? throwing garbage on the ground, you know. And Pick it up. Yeah, exactly. There'll be somebody who'll, you know, give you some trouble for that. But not in China. If you throw trash on the ground, no one's going to stop you. No one's even going to say anything. I'll do I'll do you one better. The, if mm -hmm. you went to Taiwan, which is very similar to China in many aspects, you hear Chinese everywhere, you see yeah. some Chinese temples and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. If you throw garbage on the ground, people will throw it right back in your car. Yeah, they people do. People will get furious at that. Yeah. Totally it, different. It is very different. But you know what? I always wondered about this because, you know, as soon as you cross the border from mainland China into Hong Kong, for instance, yeah. suddenly the streets are clean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you see signs up everywhere that say you're going to get like a zillion dollars. Yeah, fine. whatever. How much? 5,000 yeah. Hong Kong dollar fine for littering and stuff. Yeah. But I always wondered how did they manage to combat this? Because, you know, in for all intents and purposes, uh, Hong Kong just used to be Guangdong, right? Yeah. So it's the same culture, the same yeah. people, the same everything. And I found out that during the 70s, they had a massive push where they actually had this mascot called the Litterbug who would walk around like in a costume and shame people publicly whenever they did. And they'd like have film crews where is following that? it in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, yeah. So that's how they got rid of the whole littering issue in Hong Kong is they made it like a public shame thing where they'd have an actual litter bug going around and point fingers and ha-ha and people would like shout at them being a litter bug. You know what also works? What? Uh, enforcing the law. Yeah. But I mean, I just, I'm just saying, yeah. like, there was, yeah. there was a littering problem in Hong Kong. Of course. But then it got cleaned up by the litter bug. The litter bug did it. Mm. Anyway, I guess we got to get into this new thing because this is stupid and hilarious all at the same time. <laughs> so. <laughs> Who is this? We all know this guy. This is Rick. Wow, so good. And, uh. Thankfully, they've decided to keep him on and not get rid of him because yep. he's the source of so much uh, 
<laughs> inspiration. Where I can find the self homogenization. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. if you don't know Rick, if you're new here, uh, mm -hmm. let's just run you down. He is a what we call a white monkey. Yes. A white monkey is a person that gets a job in China to either promote Chinese propaganda or whatever, just based on their ethnicity, right? Yeah. Or their race. So that China will say, we want a white guy to say that the Chinese government is good. They give them a job, right? Yeah. So he's a presenter, and he's a presenter for Chinese state media, which is run by the propaganda department. For Xinhua, yeah. Most of the stuff he's done is relatively harmless. It's just like, wow, we're going to visit this lake. It's beautiful how the and government's always cleaned like, it up. Wow, that's a little too much for me. Again, it's been quite harmless, right? Mm. But I get, and we, we haven't noticed them using him very often, but they just pulled him out of retirement. Yeah. And wowzers, mm -hmm. are they making him go the extra mile. Yeah, how about we just watch this yeah, segment for a little bit? We will stop and talk about it as we go along, but let's just start out so you guys can, can see what it actually, in fact, I'm gonna take us out of here. Sure. Chinese okay. President Xi Jinping has always impressed the world with inspiring remarks that shine with wisdom <laughs> and vision. If you'd like to learn more about his governance philosophy, please tune in to our new show, Sheikshinary. No. Sheikshinary. Sheikshinary. No. <laughs> I gotta stop it right you there. You gotta be kidding me. Sheikshinary. Bro, they've gone they've gone like over five thousand, over it's, nine thousand. Isn't this the stupidest thing? I gotta ask the audience, isn't this the stupidest thing you've ever heard? Bro, I thought Loong was Sheikshinary. bad. Sheikshinary. What are you gonna go buy a train sheik it? You know? <laughs> go ride, ride, yeah, ride what are you gonna do? Bishikle. Yeah, ride your bishikle to the Shivan Eleven. <laughs> To buy a pop shekel. What is this she not? Sheet shenary. What is this sheet? Yeah. <laughs> go take a sheet. Yeah. You know? Come on, guys. I mean, you could go all day with yeah. this. But listen, they've done this thing where they've been trying to make, and I'm not joking, they're trying to make Xi Jinping thought, which is this uh, almost Kim Jong-esque, yeah. Kim Jong-esque philosophy on, on politics, which means that it's the dictator's way or the highway. Yeah. It's just one of those des despot things. But Study his way of thinking and all that. But, dude, a Sheikshinary is something the Bro, world doesn't it. need. They've they lost it. Don't do need that. Just, do you remember how <laughs> uh, under Xi Jinping, what's happened is that they've consolidated it so that there's only a core member like group in the CCP now. Yeah. There used to be at least a couple thousand people you could bounce ideas off if it wasn't a democracy at all. But at least there yeah. was some leadership in there, right? Now it's one dude. And it's gotten to the point where he, there's like, imagine it's just me and you, mm. and that's where the ideas stop. Imagine yep. what our show would look like if it was just us coming up with things with no inspiration. No, not even just that, just one of us. Just one of us, yeah. yeah. And I, I had to bounce, you had to bounce it off me or vice versa. Yeah. And then you get rid of me or I get rid yeah, of you. Yeah, if you say something I don't like, I'll just yeah. fire you. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? That's where we're at. Yeah. And that's why you get Sheikshinary. Sheikshinary. So uh, let's take a look at what Sheikshinary, the Sheikshinary show is all about. I'm pretty sure you can guess that it's just basically about praising uh, Xi Jinping. If you don't know, Xi Jinping is the dictator of China. Yes. So this is it. And that is, and it literally says on there, Xi Jinping Dianzi, which means like Xi Jinping Dictionary, if you want to know what the actual translation of that is. Yeah. Okay. Sheikshinary. Sheikshinary. Wow. Uh, yeah. So let's. Uh, I, so this passed some board. Like yeah. someone said, yes, this is good. Yeah, there is one thing, one little little thing I, I had to mention when he does the intro here. He says something here. Chinese President Xi Jinping has always impressed the world. Has he always impressed the world? And wait, he's always impressed the world with what? He's always... With inspiring remarks that shine with wisdom and vision. Okay. Name one thing that Xi Jinping has said. Does anybody know one? Because apparently he always impresses the world with his uh, remarks that are full of vision and all this nonsense. I can finally have a rebuttal for you. Okay, one thing. Your life is in here. 
<laughs> this is and this, so you guys we don't want to yeah. feel like you're left out non-chinese yeah. speakers yeah. out there uh one time xi jinping went to a village yes and said is your life convenient here to a farmer yeah and they framed that yeah the quote. farmer then got that that yeah. sentence written in calligraphy yes framed and put up in the room because xi yeah. jinping said that yeah. um so yes i don't think he's impressed the world i think he's impressed himself yes and other ccp members who have to kowtow to him and you know maybe a portion of the chinese population who worship him as a god do you think he knows the chic about the chic shinary this is top level state media uh, dude, you know what's nuts rick got this gig yeah rick is like they've rick is important sure what the heck happened yeah no i mean he's obviously important enough to introduce the chic shinary to the world anyway let's find out what the chic shinary is all about if you'd like to learn more about his governance philosophy please tune in to our new show chic shinary chic shinary are we low-key like promoting the chic shinary segment yeah because it's ridiculous <laughs> Doing more promotion than Rick. Yeah. In the first edition of this program, we will be taking a look at putting people at the center, or Iran mean Wei Zhongxin. Rick, uh, how Rick long has he learned China? Chinese, and he's been there how many twenty something years? Yeah. Rick. I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to say that we're very good at Chinese, but that to- that his pronunciation is freaking awful. Just yeah. saying. Just saying, that was a yeah. humble The leader of the country has always stressed the importance of its people. Mm. Their happiness and well-being have continued to be his primary concerns. The concept of people-centered governance has long been a because it's in line with our topic today. It is in line with our yeah. topic, the whole pork thing, yeah. yeah. Um, there's quite a few things I'd like to break down here, but let's continue anyway. You know, let's not get too hung <laughs> like, up. That's the quote. <laughs> yeah, that's the quote. Central let's carry tenet on. of Chinese culture, the original aspiration and the mission of Chinese communists, 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 is to seek happiness for the Chinese people and rejuvenation for the Chinese nation. Serving the people wholeheartedly has been the fundamental purpose of the century-old Communist Party of China. From a grass... Yeah, so... First of all, um, I love all the stock footage of the smiling, the... happy people in different color grades and stuff. I'm clenching my mm-hmm. uh, my stomach muscles because this is nauseating. It is this pretty is bad. truly nauseating. This is um, so bad. Now, this oh. happens in, in a lot of dictatorships and so on. They try to sort of deify their their dictator to say that he's such a uh, an incredible person that suffers so many hardships yeah to bring good to the people yeah this is actually a really china thing too it's mm-hmm. not only a dictator thing it's really a like a chinese dictator thing because in china they'll take the dictator who's already like the deified right yeah and then elevate him to a, a position where it's absolutely outlandish to think that he would even talk to a normal person yeah like how like it's such a sacrifice, yeah. right? And you can see it. They did that with Mao. They didn't do it so much with the other leaders, and they definitely do it now with Xi. Yeah, Let's check yeah. it out. Just look at all. Everyone's burnt to leather over there, and he's the only one. Who yeah, because they have to they go out have in to the work. sun all day. Yeah. Work. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's just try not to interrupt for a little bit, so people can see this propaganda. Yeah. It's Root's party chief to the leader of the party and the country's president. She has always kept in his mind an unchanging mission to do practical things for the people. In October 2015, he proposed the philosophy of people-centered development for the first time at a key meeting of the CPC. Yeah. I I just wanted to look at that quote, okay? sure. So if we go back, let's make sure I got the date right. Um, Yeah, in October 2015, this is according to Rick, okay? In this lovely Sky Don't Lie thing. In October 2015... He proposed the philosophy. He proposed the philosophy of people-centered development. Now, 
Okay, this is another little trick the Chinese government does a lot. It's like they propose yeah. propose a philosophy. Doesn't mean they're going to follow through with it, right? Yes. And they can say like China um, plans to reduce carbon emissions by whatever you know by a huge amount. And just because they say China plans, everyone in their mind thinks like, oh, China's doing it. No, it's a plan. It's not necessarily ever going to come to fruition. O- almost nothing comes. Yeah, to fruition. exactly. So I'm just saying it's a it's like a way to trick people with words. Yeah. yeah. It's also ridiculous to imply that this is a people centered government when the government has no social programs for the people. On top of that, you know, people can't vote. But I like yeah. the fact that it's only in 2015 that he proposed yeah. a people centered development. So my question is before <laughs> 2015, before he proposed this, what kind of a centered, (laughs) you know, development was this? Government centered? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Anti-people centered? What's the other option? Profit centered? I don't know what is it, but they obviously didn't care about the people previous to that. They still don't. No, they they don't. You're right. I just, I thought it's kind of weird, right? Possibly a people centered development for the first time at a key meeting of the CPC. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious about that, you know? She said it is a philosophy that should be followed in everything we do in advancing economic and social development. President Xi himself has consistently placed the people at the forefront of his heart. What? Yeah. What? What is the I, forefront of your heart? Here's the thing, right? Um, who said that? And who did yeah, Xi Jinping who, walk out there and say, Say to people like, oh, yeah, by the way, I place the people at the forefront of my heart. Or is this just some garbage that someone wrote? It's because... a scriptwriter in the propaganda department, yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're just making this shit up. And then yeah. Rick gets to say it on, on live TV or whatever. Anyway, interesting. Let's move on. <clears throat> he treats the little things, such as warm accommodation, hot meals, fresh air, and even rural toilet facilities, not as trivialities, but as significant aspects of his state governance. Okay, guys. <laughs> if you are treating hot meals and rural toilets as, you know, core aspects, significant aspects of your state well, governance. Well, they're called the little things, which yeah. means they're the core aspects. He says as significant yeah. aspects, that shows that these are huge issues. Yes. Hot meals, yeah. warm accommodation. Yeah. China's poor. Dude, do you understand? If that's going to be your top level, like, you know, um, significant aspects of your governance, you got to worry about the state of your country is what I'm saying. Yes. Little things, my ass. Little things. So let's it's go through them. Warm accommodation is a massive issue in China. Especially Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. How, how you, dare you say that's a little thing anyway? A lot of people think- burn wood and coal in their house in 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 areas that are below, sub-zero yeah like all winter and people suffocate yeah kill themselves it's, a lot it's every horrible yeah, it's it's not good but i mean this is not a little thing this is a basic human level of living it's also not being thing. addressed yeah right Home like what is the panacea for this hot meals yeah hot meals yeah i mean Think about that. If that's a significant part of your governance is to focus on making sure people have hot meals, that means your country's pretty screwed. Yeah. Right? Fresh air. Yeah. Fresh air should be a big part because we all know the sky don't lie in China. Well, we'll get into that later. Yeah. All right. And even rural toilet facilities, not as trivialities. No one goops off in that restroom. (laughs) (laughs) I... Guarantee it. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, the That's smells just too overpowering. I know. I, I was. I, I was there. I was there too. I can't look at it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, yeah, let's move. state governance. And let me get us out of here again. Okay. He stood in heavy rain, talking Senor with frontline workers. Okay. Um. I. Sorry to keep pausing this here, guys, but this this is how propaganda works, and this is why it's very important that we just point it out. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Yeah. He stood in heavy rain talking with frontline workers. And they show this picture. Now, when you hear this, he stood in heavy rain talking with frontline workers. It sounds like he's doing something incredibly heroic and uncomfortable and something that most people wouldn't do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look at the picture. Yeah. He's literally strolling with an umbrella. On a road. While, by the way, the frontline worker doesn't have an umbrella. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who's soaked? You can see he's soaked. Xi Jinping's just literally porking around with his 
umbrella yeah. in a drizzle. Okay, yeah. and they're making it out as if he's doing some heroic effort. But like, this is an a main propaganda piece, yeah. right? He stood in heavy rain. Okay, that's not heavy rain. I've been in heavy rain. Okay, that isn't heavy rain. All right. So heroic, standing. Yeah. Standing, yeah. He's, imagine that. Okay, but it doesn't stop there. Let's carry on. In heavy rain, talking with frontline workers. He has walked into farmers' barns and kitchens. What a heroic Walked man. Into farmers' barns and kitchens. Can you imagine having to walk oh, whoa, into a kitchen? Me. Oh, me heart. Yeah, or you walked into a barn. Uh, this dude is so incredible. What I an just amazing can't man. I believe what the sacrifice <laughs> he has made for us. Imagine that, just imagine having to walk into a barn and then a kitchen. And, uh, oh, on no. the same day? Oh, oh. oh. What, what else has he done that's so incredible? Let's see. Check the menu at nursing homes. Whoa, <laughs> dude, he checked the menu he at a eat, nursing home. He didn't home. eat from it. No, he just checked the menu. <laughs> He's like, what's on the menu today? And they're like, something. He's like, snot pork, I'm out of here. Yeah. So imagine that, checking the menu on a nursing home. And hmm, he stressed virtue to young students. And stressed oh! virtue to young students. How difficult. Oh, man, this virtue. poor man. Yeah, he's like... <laughs> Virtue. Yeah. This is what's important. I'm going to stress this. Yeah. Virtue. virtue. And everyone's like, oh! Yeah, they're like, oh, He said it! This, oh, he must be yeah, this so is, tired! Yeah, I know, he said, vir <laughs> he said virtue! This poor he man! He his voice! I'm a fan! <laughs> the thing is, you look how they're like trying to raise him up yeah. by saying he's done all these really these monotonous things. Self-sacrificial things that he's done. Stressing virtue to young students doesn't come to mind as a as a big ask. You know what I'm saying? Like someone said, this is like politician stunts. Listen, yeah. when you watch politician videos and they're doing the campaign trail and all stuff, you get those vibes where they're like, oh, and he went to this uh, town and he riled everyone up and everyone said... They're not going around. He walked. He opened a door. He yeah. sat in a chair. Yeah. He walked into a barn. Yes. It's not like the most monotonous task. The things that are highlighted are like he visited Iowa or yeah. something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Um, anyway, let's see what else he's done, this heroic man. She generally enjoys spending time with the people. The Spring Festival. The most significant traditional festival for Chinese people is a prime example of this. For 12 years in a row, she has established a tradition of connecting with everyday citizens ahead of the festival, a time when families across the country get together for family reunions. Just days ago, President Xi made a pre-spring festival tour to Tianjin, during which always you know they just this... can't get a good day can't they no i mean this is their official propaganda and it still looks like because it's polluted as hell yeah i mean if they could they would have painted the sky blue for his visit but it's not possible they, sh they should have yeah they'll figure it out they, they tried probably yes you know what i mean yes. spray they probably took spray paint blue spray paint and we're like whoosh, <laughs> why is it floating like, up in the floor yeah it's like it's not working <laughs> and everyone all the staff looks like smurfs yeah exactly <laughs> anyway let's see what else happened here you visited a village in xiching district to learn about the recovery of farming activities after last year's floods you notice that part he yeah. didn't go there during the floods no he wasn't there by the way, whenever any kind of uh, disaster happens, including the COVID outbreak, any of the flooding, Xi Jinping disappears. He's never been at the front lines of any disaster or any problem. He'll go a year later when it's like, oh, make sure everything's safe. Now I'll go like ask them about like, hey, how, how are you recovering? Feeling okay? Good. I don't really give a shit, but I just thought I'd ask. That type of thing. Right? Mm. Have you noticed that? Yes. He's never there. Okay. What else? Let's see. He also visited people affected by the floods there. Here are some photos with touching moments that I'd like to share with you. This one captures him visiting people in disaster-stricken areas in Shanxi amid cold winds and snow at the beginning of 2022. Why is that, like, listen, Yeah. why does that matter? Because the other people have to not just show up for 10 minutes. They have to live in that, right? Yeah, and they have to stand there for hours waiting for him to get all ready for the show. Why are we supposed to feel bad for him? It's He's the leader of the country. Cold winds and snow. So what? Remember, this is a touching moment. Remember, Rick says he wants to share some, some photos moments. of touching moments. Now, this is Xi Jinping. The poor deer is suffering because this is a disaster-stricken area. 
I'd like you to look around at this disaster-stricken area, by the way, where everything is totally fine and standing straight, and they've got new couplets on the walls, new, uh, you know, signs for prosperity on the walls. They're not going to do it if, in front of a pile of rubble. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, you, you hear disaster-stricken area, yeah. and you're thinking a touching moment. Now, if it was a rubble, and he was there helping out yeah. or actually concerned... And it was a candid photo. Maybe it'd be a touching yeah. photo. This is not touching. The dude is wearing a freaking fur hat... A very warm coat. The snow is light. It's not like a sleet wind no. hailstorm or something. But this is supposed to be a touching photo. In fact, it can't be that cold because look at the poor girl standing behind who's wearing literally an apron and a, and a sweater. She looks like she's shivering. She's probably died from pneumonia after this because she had to stand there for three hours while Xi Jinping developed a monologue. Yeah, developed. He yeah. developed it and then spoke <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm just saying, like... The way this shit is framed, excuse my language, to say that this is a touching moment and then you look at it and it's anything but. It's a regular photo of a dude standing around in not a terrible situation, just chatting to some people Yeah, yeah. who are forced to listen to him. It's true. Not touching, is it? No. What else have we got, Rick? This one was taken during a 2019 inspection in Chongqing. Despite facing slippery stone steps, and steep slopes. He <laughs> <laughs> Despite oh no. all that, you know, the, the thing that the people have to walk up every day multiple if, times yeah. a day. Maybe fix it so the villagers don't have to literally <laughs> yeah. do that like morning and night. But yeah. oh no, he had to face slippery st stone steps and steep slopes. Oh, My oh. word, this poor guy, he had to stand on a slippery stone step. No. How dare they despite, put him in that situation? Despite all of that, what? Yeah, well, let's find out. Yeah, he, he went up steep slope. Whatever, there's one photo. They probably carried him on their shoulders or airlifted him up Hiked there. into a village nestled deep in the mountains to learn about local poverty alleviation efforts. <laughs> he, of course, they threw the poverty alleviation effort into it. Oh, there's I, a petition in the chat, by the way. What's to that? To wipe Rick off of the soundboard because he's lost his... His yeah. good faith. Because we used to think of him positively. Like yeah, a no. Fun, fun little sidekick of, you know, like sure. state media, but never going too deep. Yeah. This is too much. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's what? <laughs> wow. That's a little too much for me. <laughs> he should have said that when they pitched this idea to him. I like how Xi Jinping had to go walk up a slippery stone step to learn about poverty alleviation because he doesn't know anything no, about it. No. He had to go. They banned yeah. talking about yeah, it. Exactly. What the hell? <laughs> they literally did. Let's see what else is going on here. Oh, yes. I remember that moment. I just I just want to quickly show everyone the absolute hardship that this man has had to endure here. <laughs> Poor guy. You know, these steps are potentially a little bit crooked and slippery. Potentially. Yes. These yes. steps, which are actual steps. Yeah. It's not like just a bare hillside. It could no. be he could be walking up a mud hillside or yeah. something. Hillside where there was could a turn slide. into a hill slide. It could. It could. He enough. could slide down. Yeah. I'm just saying this is a touching moment. Remember, this is one of the touching moments from Rick's uh, photo album, which yes. he keeps under his bed, I suppose. You know, with next to a toilet roll. Yes. Let's take a look at this though. Um, the effort, the absolute strain in that man's face as he puts one foot in front of another onto a stair. You know. Yes. Mm. What a brave man. The petition is now morphed into reinstating the Rick sound on the soundboard, but with the reverb diary far at the end. <laughs> yes, yeah, not a bad <laughs> that idea. Be it. Here, let's see what's next. What else has Rick got for us? And in the photos taken in Beijing, he joined ordinary citizens in making dumplings. <laughs> Yeah, the I mean, ordinary. Can you can you explain to me how that is not demeaning sounding? Like whoever wrote the yeah. script, and certainly Rick when he's reading this, doesn't he think, "Wow, this is probably not going to fly." Yeah. How bad does it sound to say he joined ordinary citizens in making dumplings? What is it? you just deified someone and made everyone look like sub yeah, everyone sub What are they doing to him? Yeah. I mean, also it's in Beijing, so he didn't even have to like go anywhere. He rolled out of his bed into like a a 
a little place which has been all set up for him and some ordinary ordinary citizens some peasants How dare you some say peasants that? came along and he made dumplings just say them. citizens yes just say citizens he mm-hmm. joins citizens in making dumplings because isn't he a citizen yeah isn't well, he the people first at he's, the he's a front? super citizen he's the king citizen we just what, found a plot hole what's that the people are at the forefront of his heart apparently not because they're just ordinary citizens no they always put citizens and people first in front of the cannons, you know, for cannon fodder. You, oh, you know, you saw Tank oh, Man, right? Oh, oh, oh. Who's Tiananmen in front? Who's, who's first? There? See, it's a human. There's a human there. They're putting people first, you know, in front of the danger. You know, he will always be last. Yes. At the end, behind. Remember, remember the the quote, the mm-hmm. famous quote. Which one? Uh, the foreign forces will be bashed and bloodied against the yeah. you know the, the, what iron is the iron great which is the chinese people yeah. while i sit in my yeah, little throne you know anyway. throne room while you guys all die on my behalf anyway let's see dumpling one more time decorating windows with paper cut crafts <laughs> I mean, the, the fact that they they make a thing out of the fact that he went up to a window and you know he just did one. They had like one prepared for him and he like stuck a piece of paper on a window. The, the difference is like you can do all this stuff, yeah. do the photo ops or whatever, but you don't need to do a play-by-play explanation. That's what cheapens this. So much. Make remember, this is part of the touching photos yeah. that from Rick's under his bed album that he wants to share to everyone here. <laughs> there is bed You know what I'm album. saying? He keeps it there. Yeah. Um, yeah. the fact that this is on state TV in a new show called Sheik Sheikshinary. Where they show like these amazing moments of I what mean, President Xi, I mean chairman dictator Xi. I'm almost did. feeling bad. Like I'll mm-hmm. In a different timeline, if the Chinese government was more benevolent and wasn't truly evil, yeah. like trying to destroy my country and stuff, be happy to help out with some direction on these uh, on these efforts here because these yeah. videos are counterintuitive what they want to do. Any yeah. native English speaker, wa- speaker watching this is going to think this is preposterous. Yeah, wait, what is it? It's preposterous. Mm-hmm. Truly, though. Yeah, truly. I wonder what else we might have here. Let's see. And sharing good wishes for the approaching spring festival. President Xi is leading the Chinese nation as they strive toward the goal that he calls both inspiring and simple. Both inspiring and simple? What is that? It sounds boring. (laughs) Wait, how can something be inspiring and simple at the same time? I mean, and this is a goal, by the way. Oh, yes. The goal is inspiring. Another plan and a goal, right? Brush your teeth. Hmm. That's inspiring. It's simple. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Close that drafty window. That's you know inspiring. I mean? It's simple. Yes. I mean, seriously. <laughs> this is such oh, well, let's, nonsense. Uh, it is nonsense. <laughs> Sheikshinary. <laughs> the oh. Sheikshinary, by the way. Can we just cap this off by saying yeah. this has got to be the most tasteless tone deaf piece they've done mm. since we started the show? Yeah. This is counterintuitive to what they want. No one in their right mind is going to watch this. Because you know what? The Chinese government put that out in English for a reason. They hired yeah. Rick for a reason. They think that people watch this and say, oh, you know, he's a really good guy. And they thought it was such a clever name, too. Yeah. Yeah. People I mean, are people are going to say, Sheikshinary, what is that? Yeah. Then after that, they're going to go, wow, they really... They really worship this dude. This is talk about putting yourself on a pedestal. This is just like North Korea. That's what I, I feel like ninety percent of people will think. Just, just remember, this isn't for you know because you get this stuff in the Chinese language propaganda all the time, you know. But um, it works for the Chinese, uh, you know, population because in Chinese it doesn't yes. sound as dumb, okay, as Sheikshinary. But for them to actually take this idea and say, we're going to make this for the Western world. We're going to get our Western white monkey presenter to, to star in the show and present this chic shenary. And everyone around the world is going to watch this and think we're cool and Le- think Xi Jinping is a great man and all that shit. It's not going to have the effect sheet. they think. Yeah. It's just so bad. It's just sheet. It is. Mm. But you know what's not? No. The People's Legit Army. Wait. 
-hmm. So there is a boy band, um, mm -hmm. which is made of PLA members. Yeah. Uh, you guys probably heard about it in the last show, but they had another performance. We wanted to show you uh, yeah. the, the follow-up. Yeah, let's yeah. take a look, guys. People's Legit Army. We got a little world of our own I'll tell you things that no one else knows I'll let you in when no one else goes What am I doing without you? Everybody in love, go put your hands up Everybody in love, go put your hands up Everybody in love, go put your hands up If you're in love, put your hands up Yes Classic, Excellent. absolutely classic, and we'll have more pr uh, presentations from the People's Legit Army. Yeah, uh, whenever they drop a new track. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. every week we'll have something uh, from them. Absolutely. Anyway, that's a great way to lead into our fantastic sponsor, which that's of right. course is AG One. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last two years we've been drinking AG One every day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel nourished and ready to take on the day. That's because each serving of AG One delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's a powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. Uh, one thing that I noticed was that AG1 literally helped my sleep. So having a hard time staying asleep, helped me get back on track uh, yep. with my sleep schedule. Not only that, my recovery, my yep. recovery. Oh, you're taking a little sip of AG1. Is that AG1 in there? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. I thought you were going <laughs> to give no, me it's like not a, AG1 in I thought you were going to give me like <laughs> but... a secret surprise. <laughs> Ah, you did. Bring, I need. I actually it. have the AG one uh, thingy that uh, you get with when you order. I took mine in the morning, and I always drink it in the morning. Yeah, and uh, I it's bring fantastic. this to the office yes. with me, and it's very easy. Uh, inside, you have a fantastic uh, powder, which and you a then, scoop. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you the scoop, and you even get this green. Scoop. I don't think it's going to show up because of the green screen. Oh, it actually does. By the way, it's very heavy. Yes. I think it's made out of metal, perhaps. For real, though, I wanted to start Very nice. uh, trying AG1 because I was feeling, you know, yeah, pretty yeah. pretty awful in my recovery whenever I did exercise and also my sleep. But you were trying it because you had brain fog. Yep. Legitimately. Clarity. Where do you think I come up with all these, like, boy band dancing stuff? It's because... And know. the first segment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's all because of the unbelievable focus that you felt because of AG1. I'd like to think some of it's me. Yeah. You know? Oh, definitely. But think about how AG1 has propelled you to become oh, the better version of yeah, yourself. Yes, so it'd be absolutely... Uh, preposterous if, if I were to say it's other words, you know? No jokes, though. I have felt markedly better Me too. Uh, Me too. throughout the day. And, and that's no joke. We would never uh, tell you to purchase something that we didn't truly believe in or, or use ourselves. Correct. And, and that's why we, we put can name put yeah. our names behind AG1. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's one product that we had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why we partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and get five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag one dot com slash adv that's drink ag1.com slash adv check it out and by the way if you want to help us if you're ever thinking of a way to help us out because you love the show definitely check out ag1 because they're yeah. a fantastic sponsor absolutely appreciate it. and thank you very much to our audience and thank you to ag1 yeah yeah cool so i guess it's time for our main segment um it is not it's it is not. our time for our beyond the great oh wall. yes of course our new uh, segment our new segment beyond the great wall yeah which is coming i promise eventually. it is absolutely coming yeah someday. in fact you could just skip right to it i could you could yeah i believe a, it or not you could do that it's a possibility yeah. i have put the, your hand on that i have mouse. the te technology and the ability to do so you could literally move your hand on I the could. mouse to do that i'm just curious as to how there it is beyond it is. the great firewall Mm, excellent. What is Beyond the Great Firewall? Can you pause it there? Beyond the Great Firewall, for all of you people that are new, slash the people who have been around who are not familiar with this new segment we have created, it's when we take something that is going around on the Chinese internet that is either going viral or people are discussing it and bringing it to you in English and explaining it to you because there's so much out there that you're not going to see on any sort of news article because of the language barrier language and also barrier. the, the <laughs> cultural barrier. Like if you can read something, even if you can read it in Chinese, you might not understand what it means. Yeah. So we want to explain things to you. And there's been this uh, stupid clip that's been going around. Yeah, let's show it. <laughs> let's <laughs> show it. Come on. There we go. Yes. What's going on there, Seamilk? So here's the deal. This is the perfect segment to address this, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. There is a woman washing dishes in hot pig slop. In pig slop, yeah. Okay. It might not even be hot. 
Okay. It might not. Well, I think it is steaming. Okay. Anyway, um, use that could hot, just be natural decomposition. This steam, is true. You know? This is true. Hot pig slop being used to wash dishes. Now, the the silly thing about this is mm -hmm. that this was just one of those shocking clips that goes around in China and people make fun of it. And they're yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But some people took this clip in the, I don't know what you want to say, like the critical of China sphere. Yeah. And we're saying like, wow, it's gotten so bad that they're literally don't have water to wash their dishes. Well, they're washing it people, in pink slop. Yeah, people were saying, the CCP oh, recommended the CCP this. recommended that you do this to sanitize your dishes or something. But that's all nonsense. It's like, bro. That's not you true. You you stupid idiot. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's exactly. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's gross. It's made as a joke, and the comments are a joke. There is no recommendation from the CCP no. that you should wash your dishes in pig no. slop. No. Anyway, yeah. I translated some of the stuff so you guys can actually read it. Yeah. Uh, these people obviously don't bother to learn what these things are about. Yeah, it's still gross. Uh, but yeah, look here. It says, um, I'm going to have to pull this yeah. up. Both of these pictures are Woman absolutely... Woman uses pig food to wash dishes. Sparks controversy. Yeah. says, this is what the older generation use when there is no dish soap. It's a joke. It's yeah. literally a shock joke, right? So people mm -hmm. would be like, that's disgusting. And the comments down here says, city people can't stand it, but we rural people think this is normal. So it's sarcasm, yep. right? Yeah. The, the second comment's my favorite. Uh, this dude, he says... Forget it. My mother asked me to cook pig food when I was a kid. It means like pig slop. Yeah. Uh, the more you cook, the more delicious it becomes. I couldn't help but serve myself a big bowl. <laughs> yep. It's just a shocking, funny video. And yeah. yet somehow these people are like, the CCP is recommending Well, people. I'll tell you why people believe in this stuff is because um, if you think about, uh, let me go back one yeah, second. If you, if you think about traditional Chinese medicine. Yeah. Very often, people just make stuff up. Mm. You know they do. Or they hear something, and then they misinterpret it or something. And then yeah. they just treat it as fact. Yeah. They'll be like, if you yeah. sleep under the moon with a leaf in your ear you know, on a Wednesday night, it can cure some disease. Yeah. And they believe it. And that's why people are parodying that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you know, that's why if someone were to say... This old... Because it says like old, old people yeah. say that this is a, a good way to s disinfect your dishes... You could believe that some people in China would believe that because yeah. of all the TCM nonsense that goes around. That's the meme. Yeah. That's why this is a meme. Because exactly. it's making fun of like, how ridiculous can these old wives tales get? Yes. That's what this is. Yeah. yeah. And yet people took this seriously. Yeah. So, okay, we're going to yeah. talk about frog at the bottom of a well. This is another Beyond the Great Firewall segment. So mm -hmm. I'll just pause it there. This is interesting because this has roots in us mm -hmm. and it also pertains to a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. And the reason I brought it up is recently... It's being used in an official capacity by Chinese people and the Chinese government to talk about Taiwanese people. But first, we have to explain to you what this actually yes. means. Okay, and we have a little thing I put together Frog a while ago. at the bottom of the well. So, Jing Di Zhi Wa tells the story of a frog that was born in the bottom of an old well. He would gaze up at the dim light, believing that this was in fact the sun. One day, a bird flew into the well and spoke to the frog. Why do you not come up to the outside world where it is bright and warm? The frog replied, Shabalaji ni jigata ma da wai guo ren. Je shi wo ma de zhong guo. Ni bu shi zhong guo ren gun hui ni zi ji de guo jia. Zhong guo gong chang dang wan sui yi. Zhong guo di yi. Which roughly translates to, You are a fool. This that surrounds us is, in fact, the entire world. So, mm -hmm. what this actually is is a Chinese proverb. It's an old, it's very Chinese old, proverb. ancient story, thousands yeah. of years old. And it's kind got, of think about Aesop's fables. It's yes. something like that. There's a frog at the bottom of the well, mm -hmm. and he thinks that when he looks up and sees light, that's the sun. So, yeah. to him, the whole world is just this well. Yes. Right. Which is a sim. It's symbology to say that you are closed-minded. Yes. And you do not have perspective on what's the yeah. You what's can't happening see in the outside world. of your bubble. Basically, you only you know, you got a very limited worldview. So we were being called by Chinese government employees slash Wu Mao the frogs at the bottom of the well, which yeah. was just hilarious irony. Yeah. Because we were reporting on things that they're not allowed to even talk about. Yes. Right? Mm. And they were calling us this because it's like, well, they left China, so now they're frogs at the bottom of the well. They can't understand anything anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Also, Chinese government started using this to make fun of Taiwan and, and Chinese people in general. Like, for example, you can see Hua Chunying, which is a Chinese uh, government Official. spokeswoman, yeah. right? 
She says, uh, uh, there's a picture of a frog in a well that says G7 equals world. So making fun of the idea that if you believe that the G7 is significant on the world stage or represents the world, then mm -hmm. you're missing the greater picture, mm -hmm. right? Now, this became a derogatory term, like I said, for Taiwanese people. Yeah. So Chinese people mm -hmm. and Chinese government officials using these memes to make fun of Taiwanese people. And we can see that in some of these other things. For example, um, in this one here, it says, the universe revolves around Taiwan and the people of Taiwan can decide. So they're making fun of Taiwan's democracy by saying yeah. that everyone in this well is just trapped in this well and they don't have a picture or outside view of what China actually is, right? Yes. They yes. probably look down on China, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this has some actually yeah, amazing Yeah, the fact that Taiwan origins. people even have the audacity to be yes. able to decide their own fate is, you know, kind yes. of, that's what this is all about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how dare they? Yeah, right? how dare they? So, how close-minded, right? It says, mm -hmm. are Taiwanese people like frogs in a well? And these images go around, and Taiwanese people are called frogs in the well. Mm -hmm. When the sheer irony is that it's Taiwan that has freedom of press. Yes. Free internet. Mm -hmm. It's open to the entire world. They can communicate with the world, whereas China has the Great Firewall of yeah. China. Thus, this segment beyond the Great Firewall. Yeah. China, Chinese people don't get to see the outside world no. because everything's blocked on the internet. If ever there was a frog in the well, it would be China. It would be China, right? Mm. Now, this this has interesting origins. Okay. If you look at this picture of tea eggs, these are not pea eggs. Pause no. it there. Yeah, these are not... Uh, where are they? <laughs> not piss eggs. No. Mm, this is... <laughs> The reason I'm showing you a picture of tea eggs, which is, are awesome, by the way, which are great. Yeah, they're basically <clears throat> eggs boiled in like soy and tea. Yeah. Anyway, the reason I'm showing you these is that this is where this phrase comes from. The frog in the bottom of the well is a reference uh, for derogatory reference for Taiwanese people. In the 90s, a Taiwanese reporter went to rural China in Henan. Yeah, went to a village, reported on how holy crap, it's poor here, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. I guess one of the people in the village said, we're too poor here to even eat tea eggs. And the reason they say that is because tea eggs are very cheap. Yeah, right? it's a very cheap thing to buy on the side of the road. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so when he went there, he reported on that. And this is a delicious piece of irony because mm -hmm. that report was accurate at the time. Probably still accurate today. In many places. In many places, yeah. However, mm. what happened was... Chinese, the Chinese government state media report took the image of him, the reporter, the Taiwanese reporter saying this, they can't even afford tea eggs here, implying that it's all of China. Yeah. Zoomed it in so that there's no date on it anymore yep. and said, look, this is what Taiwan thinks about our China. They think we're so poor we can't even afford to eat tea eggs. And they did eggs. that in modern day. Yeah, in modern, modern days. Modern times, yeah. And they think they're, they're the frog at the bottom of the well. They have no perspective on how amazing China has become. And so then netizens and people in China started saying, oh, look, Taiwanese people don't even know about us real Chinese people anymore because they're so cut off. They're at the bottom of the well, right? Sure. And that's actually how this happened. It became a genuine news story that they bastardized and turned it into reverse propaganda. Yep. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. 100%. It was interesting. Uh, yeah. Interesting to learn the origins of this. We have been called such a thing as well. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay, so I guess it's time yes. for us to hit uh, soft power hour, everybody. This is the main segment of the show. And this is where we talk about how China is trying to change your mind in various ways. And there's been a big push recently. In fact, we may as well demonstrate it. What you're seeing here are tweets from separate CCP shills. Now, CCP shills are these, uh, these foreign dudes who live in China and are incentivized or to... Yeah, dudes. Uh, Usually could, dudes. Yeah, dudes and dudettes. Dudes okay. and dudettes. Um, they're incentivized to propagandize for the Chinese government, right? Yes. But they go overboard. It's very, very desperate types of individuals who do this. But anyway, here's one. He says, China's communist uh, consumers, sorry, I almost said communists. I'm kind of glad that Rick said Chinese communists in his little piece. Well, because to the CCP, that's a positive thing. Yeah. They've drank their own Kool-Aid. Yeah, because, you know, most people try to avoid that. Yeah. It's bad look. <laughs> yeah. It's bad PR. It's bad PR to say Chinese communists, but they are. The Chinese yeah. Communist Party, they are communists. Anyway. By China's... the way, this is not a real Twitter handle. This is a real tweet, but we're yes. covering up their Twitter handles because we don't want to promote their propaganda. We don't want to promote propagandists, and also we don't really want people to go brigade these, yeah, of course. these poor misguided souls, yeah. because at the end of the day, their, their punishment is the fact that they are in the position they're in. Number one, they have to live in whichever city it is that they're, you know... Yeah, let's, be, yeah, let's be honest, I'd rather wherever, not. Yeah. Um, but the second thing is that they have to bend over for the Chinese government and suck. sell their souls. It's got to suck. Right? And there's, yeah, it's enough punishment as it is. Yeah. So anyway, this particular CCP shill said, China's consumers are forming lines in front of shops in Wuhan's uh, Jianghan 
Walking Street as the economy flies high. <laughs> Domestic yeah. consumption was up 7.2% in 2023 in China over 2022. In, I believe you meant in Chona. Yeah, in Chona. Sorry, in Chona. That's right. In Chona, dude. Didn't, didn't even, even spell write. right. This poor guy. He's going to get a pay cut. He's going to get in some trouble for calling China Chona. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like the trend is continuing from the view on the street. Okay, so this is that stupid fallacy where they're like, the economy is doing well because here are some people buying stuff number one no one's buying anything in this footage have you noticed yeah i don't see shopping bags there's one one. shopping bag this is a stupid thing to say because this particular walking street is a tourist destination this is actually counterintuitive and i'm glad that you brought this up as a way to set up this segment because Mm -hmm. there's a huge push in china right now to ban anyone talking about if the economy is going down and when you see a dictatorship put out videos or pictures that say, look, the economy is doing well. Everyone's shopping so much. Everything is good. You know it's the exact opposite. And China mm-hmm. needs to learn not to do this. Yeah. Because when they put this out, it's an indicator that, wow, now I'm going to go Google and see what's happening. Oh, the economy is literally tanking. Here's the thing, okay? Let's just say there's widespread poverty in uh, in America. I'm just using this as an example. And let's say in Arkansas and Alabama and whatever other state starts with an A, uh, all over the country, there yeah. are people that are starving and you know who are losing their jobs. 2008 financial crisis. I bet you at the height of the 2008 financial crisis, you could still go to Times Square in New York City and there'd be crowds of people. Yeah, of course, of course. There's always going to be yeah. crowds of people in a massive tourist destination, no matter how bad the economy is. Yeah. And this is a tourist destination. Yeah. It's yeah. a walking street. Yeah. When people don't have money, they still go there. Yeah, it's not. They it's, still walk around. Also, it's, you can't just take a 1.4 billion sample and shrink it down to a walking street in a tourist area and say, this represents the entire economy. And it's a yeah. joke. When you do that, you're 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 yeah. laying it all bare. Just remember, when you see this, think about that. Go to Times Square or maybe go to like Hollywood or something, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, find a big tourist destination. And it doesn't matter how bad the economy is doing. You will still find lots of people. will right. still be jumbling around. I don't see a lot of people buying things. But, you know, according to this dude, the economy is doing great. Because uh, it's, doing wait, it's doing great. And that's simply because there are people in a tourist area. What a shock. Again, this is really dangerous to put this kind of stuff out because it really has the opposite effect. Yeah. People grew up, especially that grew up in the Cold War and the Soviet Union, when they used to put that kind of propaganda out, it's it's imo yang, as they say in Chinese. It's exactly the same. Here's another CCP show. Now, the reason why I did this is because multiple accounts are doing this. So you know it's it's a directive. Yes. Okay, if one shill was just going on doing this, it'd be okay. But multiple shills all at the same time? Okay, this one uh, says, ground report. This is the streets. That's that's a dog whistle, a red flag (whistles) on the ground. Yeah, exactly. This is the streets. So this dude can't even speak English. This is the streets. This is the streets. I believe he's South African. Yeah, exactly. He's, He's a... Um, this is the streets in Hangzhou, China. Chinese people are spending money like never before. I love China's economy. <laughs> so on the nose, it's like, you know, what it reminds me of what? It's like, it's kind of like going to uh, a supermarket and saying, "Look at all these full shelves." Yes. Oh, I just can't believe how amazing this. Whenever you see full shelves at supermarkets, yeah. Oh, look at the streets are bustling. The economy is so good. Big warning flags that this oh, yeah. is propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. So again, where are the shopping bags? If if you're trying to say that people buying their lunch means that the economy is doing well at a cheap street food store where it costs almost nothing. I think I think the quote, I love China's economy is the best. Yes. Like I, you had to put that in. I there. love China's economy. Why? Not you, I'm saying. Yeah, like the, right the guy. Where are the shopping bags? You know? It's if literally people, people walking around. If you see people filming, look at the good economy or saying, look at how much food there is in the supermarket, you can just turn that off. You yeah. can literally turn the channel and be like, well, that was propaganda. Again, this is a tourist walking area. Okay, this is a place that people go to shop. If you're going to go shop, if you're going to go you know, out for the day, you go to the shopping district. So, I mean, it's of like course. There's million people there, dude. If you're going to want to um, film somebody shopping, you go to the one place in the city where everybody shops, right? Mm. And you will be able to find people shopping, you know? Yes. 
It doesn't mean the economy is doing well. It's love, super stupid. I love China's economy. I love lamp. I love wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's the stupidest thing you could ever say. I love China's economy. Well, I mean, <laughs> incredible. I love that quote. Yeah, you, I mean, they just don't know how to do propaganda. They, they they do. They're very subversive in their propaganda, and then they can divide like Americans and stuff when they yeah. do like agit prop. Yeah, but when they do stuff like this, like everything is fine. Don't look here. Look yeah, at this. The economy like, is booming. Come on, guys. Come isn't, on. isn't that so stupid yeah. to try and make a point like that? You know, oh, the economy is up. Uh, how do I prove this? Let me go to the tourist shopping area and show that there are people buying things. Yes, yes. look, everyone, the economy is fine. Yes. Okay, go. I dare those people to go like, I don't know, 20 minutes outside the city yes. and film people there. Yes. yes. Is it is it the same? Mm, I don't think so. No. So what that leads us into is, again, we don't notice stuff until people start doing overt, very on the nose, slopaganda. Yes, that is slopaganda. Yeah. We should have actually put, yeah, them, put in the soundbite. But that is slopaganda because when they when they start all on mass, putting yeah. these things out like, the economy is great, people are buying things. Yes. Then you know something's wrong. So that's when you look into it. And a lot of people have been economic uh, people mm -hmm. that look into how an economy is doing have no indicators from the central government anymore because they're removing them, right? Yeah, yeah. So what they've decided to do is have a look at something that has indicated China's economy for a while now, yeah. and that is pork prices. And this is measuring pork countries, like <laughs> yeah, pork, yeah, exactly. by meat consumption, because this is actually a fairly reliable statistic. It is. So if we look at this, right, there was an interview done in a very, very uh, popular place to buy meat around Beijing, around the mm -hmm. Chinese New Year. And this is when people are buying the most pork in particular yes. for the Chinese New Year celebration, yes. right? Yes. That, by the way, is important. Oh, you blurred it out? Yeah, well, because people in the comments are saying, you better not show dog meat. Oh, man. <laughs> well, people get upset at dog meat. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, yeah, it's true. I don't, I don't want to freak people out, no. but it is a reality of life in China. Sure. Go to any market. Um, well, me and you had a personal discussion about yeah, this. Like, yeah. we, you know, there, there's certain things that really bother people. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, and you know I'm, I'm, I'm actually more for that than you, to sure. be honest, in the past no, I've, anyway. I've changed. You've changed, yeah. okay, yeah. I don't want to shock people with uh, dog meat, but no. it's there. Well, that is dog meat, by yes. the way. Anyway, uh, the meat mm. consumption leading up to a holiday should be absolutely... I'm glad you left in that little paw. Well, now you can see. Well, it's got to be a some evidence, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're not going to get rid gotta, of all of it. You're going to be like, hey, think I am? it's real. Yeah. I just, okay, guys, not trying to be facetious here, but dog meat is a thing in China. Oh, and everywhere. you can buy it everywhere. Yeah, and we've covered it, this really gets on my nerves when people pretend that it doesn't exist yeah. or try to excuse it away yeah. or say that, oh, it's only in little rural areas and no. stuff. I've no, filmed no, dog cities. meat in the main big cities. Main, main, main cities everywhere. We even yeah. found it in Shanghai, yeah. which so, is the place where you're not going to find it. Yeah, and it was made illegal in Shenzhen, yeah. but it's still available it's everywhere you on go. On the road. It's in yeah. this footage. You'll see. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. there might be a very light sensor on that one compared to this one. Okay. Anyway, uh, so leading up to a holiday run... Yeah. You're going to be selling lots of pork, right? Yeah. Now, why would that indicate anything? Well, traditionally, meat was kind of seen as a rarity in China. We know people our age yeah. where meat was a luxury. Some people we knew didn't eat meat until they were teenagers. Dude, food was a rarity. Yes. People starved to death Partic during the Great Leap Backwards of the Cultural meat. Devolution. Not even talking yeah. about that generation. I'm talking about people in their 30s. Yeah, sure. Okay. People in their 30s, we know people that didn't have meat until they were in their teens. Yeah, because China was poor. So, still, still is in, yes, in, yes, in many ways. big areas of China, still very poor. But literally, before China opened up in 7980 and Deng Xiaoping allowed the rest of the world to help invest China yeah. and help people yeah. actually make money, China really was a starving, poor backwater. Yes. You know? So, what, so a quote from a, a meat seller here says, this time last year... This hall, so the hall, the what is this the pig three three? We'll get, we'll get to that. In okay, second. I'll move back to some meat then, because I want to hear about your pig three three three. This hall was so mm. squeezed, so full of people that you couldn't even move. Mm. And this is a, a pig seller, a pork seller. Pork right? seller, yeah. We used to sell two or uh, twenty pigs a day in the holiday run up, but this year is just selling five per day. Mm. That's a quarter of yeah. the meat consumption. You can actually measure this too. There are many uh, indicators yeah. on on. <laughs> For pig example, three. pig333.com is literally a professional pig community, which tracks the sales and prices of pork. And as you can see, okay. 
Take us out of there. A pig pig community, all right. Not only has pi- pork uh, sales slowed down drastically in China, yeah. but also the the prices have tanked, right? Yeah. That is a recipe for absolute disaster, yeah. right? It's not that there's scarcity, it's that nobody wants to buy it, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, when you remove all economic indicators and you say, well, uh, we're not going to tell people how little people are buying because they don't want to people to stop uh, they want people to stop investing in China, mm. right? Then you have to look for other ways to, to document, you know, what, the, that's, a, yeah, that's a big yeah. space. It's a butcher. What do you expect? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I filmed that. Yeah, we have butcher <laughs> butcher footage. Yeah. Then you start to look at other things. Yeah. And you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. China jettisoned securities watchdog had his Beijing battles turmoil. So mm. you remember whenever there's something real bad happening, yeah. all of a sudden you start, start to see people disappear from sure. leadership positions. Mm-hmm. So the Chinese government has this dude that's supposed to oversee what the stock market is doing. No, I think a securities watchdog is is something that's international. That's that's going to be some um I don't think that's no, a Chinese is. government thing. It's absolutely related to the Chinese government's okay. policies though, right, right, right? Yeah, yeah. on what they do in the in the CSI, the Chinese stock the st- Chinese stock market, right? Yeah. So what you have is a situation where they go, well, the stock market's going down. We got to get rid of this dude, right? Yeah, yeah. And they get a new guy and you're like, "Oh, that's another warning sign," mm-hmm. right? But there's still no economic indicators that they're reporting, right? Yeah. So you have to start digging in a little bit deeper, right? Yeah. And you you can actually look at this uh, very clearly. The pork consumption between uh, fifty it was fifty three million to fifty four million metric tons in twenty twenty three. That is insane, by the way. That's yeah. a lot of pork. fifty four million metric tons of pork. Yes. That's just Xi Jinping's consumption alone. <laughs> yes. Which was actually, that was lower by one to two million tons. Whoa. So it drops one to two million tons within a year. Crazy. Right? Crazy. Why is that? Well, that's because people don't want to spend money on meat, right? Mm-hmm. If you have disposable income, you're going to put it on something else, maybe cheaper food. Because guess what? People's disposable income is going down. Big time. People are getting poor. The stock market is collapsing. Here's a little the thing. You know, NVIDIA... Yeah. The NVIDIA stocks are now worth more than the entire Chinese stock market. Correct. Just NVIDIA, yes. the, may it's, the way it's meant to be played. Correct. You know, NVIDIA as in a a, a Riva TNT2 or whatever, or yes. a freaking, you know what I'm talking about here, GeForce? Yes. You're a gamer. The graphics you, cards. You know Everyone NVIDIA. Knows NVIDIA. You know NVIDIA. They're fantastic. They're, you know, they're awesome. And now their stock is worth more than the entire Chinese stock market. It shows yes. you. That's not good. One company... Yeah. Versus an entire country. It is. By the way, people are asking, this is not a, a vet. This is a, it says it says dog meat. Go roll. It shows a picture of a Shiba Inu with a collar on. This is, uh, we took this footage. Yeah. Um, and looking- yes, they do. They do eat pet dogs. Yes, and that's sure. another, that's another myth that they breed dogs for eating. Yeah. That's not true. They eat any dog and they actually steal pet dogs. And it's a huge problem. There's a huge problem issue with uh, like these dog thieves that go around stealing people's pets and selling them to restaurants that's not some urban myth no it's real and it, to give credit where credit's due there are grassroots organizations in china with chinese people that go and fight this yeah i've covered that yeah. before i've done various dog yeah. meat videos on my channel i'm pretty passionate about it and i've actually interviewed some of those sure. uh, no dogs left behind and all those type yeah. of uh, organizations but it's doesn't they don't even put a slight dent in the problem. That's yes. that's the issue. Anyway. So there is a huge drag on inflation, right? And there's a big problem with consumer prices that are falling. And that's a huge devastating indicator when a country has... It's not not a good economic indicator when prices are collapsing and consumption is down too. Yeah. That's bad. If yeah. you have prices going down because of competition and then the economy is going up because people are buying more stuff, that's a good trend, right? Yeah. If you have prices and consumption going down, that's deflation. That's really nasty. It's a nasty yeah. thing to happen. What's the, this headline over here? Sorry to interrupt uh, you. As China markets flow, the rest of the world is roaring ahead. So here's the issue. Before, there was a scary, scary, scary situation where people were so scared to divest from China. And if China had any economic woes or problems, it was going to have a knock-on effect for the rest of the world. And by and large, that was actually true when the Mm. world was so engrossed and entrenched in the Chinese economy. Yeah. But the rest of the world is literally blowing up. Yeah. The economies are doing excellent. The U.S. economy is doing well. Other economies around the world doing very well. As they divest from China at the same yeah. time, mm-hmm. it's the exact opposite of what, what was predicted to happen, right? That's okay. Just go to a touristy area and you'll think everything's fine in China. 
That's true. So there'll be people walking Or around. read uh, Chinese propaganda and you will be convinced that the U.S. economy is literally in shambles and that you're going to be unemployed. Tomorrow. Yeah, and that China's, I don't know, GDP is up five point something garbage percent, which is not true. It's the numbers are flubbed. And also, yeah. you know, they're very disingenuous when they say things like spending is up X, Y, Z amount. Yes, yes, because yes. Because the, the previous year or whatever, people were in their houses due to COVID and couldn't spend. And all the yeah. restaurants were shut down and everything was, all the shops were closed. So yeah, of course, there's going to be more spending than the year before when you couldn't buy anything. Exactly. Food prices fell by 5.9% year on year, the lowest level on record. And that's, like you said, is not a good thing. That means no. people are not buying because no. they can't afford it. So the shops have to lower the prices. Quote from the meat seller guy. And again, yeah. I think these are these these interviews are super genuine because it's just a dude that's only going to have his interview indicator is am i selling stuff yeah. right and the people around me it's getting worse and worse year after year mm. there are fewer people shopping and people are buying less yeah i mean it's quite literally in opposition to all of the shills when the shills put out like a tweet saying the economy is doing well people are buying more and then they don't interview a Chinese person that's like, dude, I'm having trouble selling stuff that I usually sell. Yeah. Or ask the average person whose wage just fell. Yeah. Or ask the average college graduate that just came out that can only make $3,000 a year. Yeah. It can't even hit five, like uh, a fifth of the, the country's supposed national average, yeah. right? crazy. All of these things start to add up and you go, wait a minute. Now I get why they're not reporting on China's youth unemployment rate and all these other figures and they're pulling all of these metrics that we can look at because they need to make this story up. They do. They need to make sure that people are not completely dropping China out of the picture because they are. If, if you had a real indication of how the economy is doing, you're not going to invest in China. No, no, you're not. And that's the thing. You ask those shills, you know, the government like, says 7.3% increase in spending and stuff. Where'd you get that source? My source is that I made it the f*** up. That's, exactly. That's going to be your answer. You What's, can see China's, uh, Jan just in January, the consumer prices fell by almost almost 1%, right? Uh, then that was from Helen Chow from BOFA Global Research Chief. I don't want to hear any BOFA jokes. Uh, moving Bofa on. BOFA what? Uh, who knows, right? You'll have to come <laughs> up with your own conclusion okay, to that. Sure. Okay. Uh, but moving on to that, uh, mm -hmm. from that, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at the, the Chinese bubble, the economic bubble, did have a burst in 2015, right? Right. And that, then the whole trade war happened in 2018, right? And that led to a synchronization of, of global shares dropping. That's yeah. where this fear of like, we cannot divorce ourselves from China. We yeah, cannot divest from, from China because we, our economy is so, again, entrenched yeah. that we go down when they go down, right? Yeah. Does it not look like he takes his meat and rubs it on that wall behind him? Does it that not, wall is covered does, in blood, Doesn't it doesn't look it? like yeah, that? Anyway, sorry, carry on. No worries, no worries. <laughs> it kind of looks like it. It's a meat wall. But here's the yeah. deal. Mm -hmm. Despite that happening, that has become an isolated event in history now because of the progression that we've seen in, in economies around the world that have, yeah. have divested. In fact, if we look at statistics, right, the great divergence comes as onshore Chinese stocks have lost 4.8 trillion dollars in value since 2021. Yeah, 4.8 trillion dollars. We're talking about beyond the GDP of many countries in the entire world. Yeah. Right? Just in the stock market. Yeah. Uh, bogged down by a deepening property crisis. Remember, two of biggest chi China's biggest property markets or property developers have gone belly up. Sure. Right? Deflationary pressure and the state's sweeping control over the private sector. We had a situation where the West was like, let's invest in China. It looks like the government kind of just wants to promote economic growth. They let us do whatever we want, right? Mm -hmm. Now the government steps in and says, no, your, your company's too big. Even Chinese domestic companies get neutered yeah. by the government. And everyone's like, well, that doesn't look very reliable. Right? Sure. That's actually really not a good thing, right? Yeah. Foreign investors sold a net 18.2 billion yuan in Chinese equities last month. In mm. a month. Mm. Uh, that's that's a to not just a six straight month of outflows. The yeah. central bank has been persistently supporting the yuan currency. While world stocks rose 20% last year, gold 13%, Bitcoin 155%, China's blue chip CSI 300 fell well, 11%. Gold and Bitcoin raises that much because it's the Chinese, you know, corrupt. Divesting, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, people just trying to get their money out of China. It's true. Well, it, has, it does, definitely has an impact on it. Huge it, impact. That's where all the money comes from. 99.9% .9 of Bitcoin value is people getting their money out of China. Obviously not, but... Yes. You know. Facetiousness aside. Yeah. It's, uh, it's at least 80%. I'm, I'm kidding. What's your source? <laughs> I'll tell you my source. My source is that I made it the f*** up. 
<laughs> I'll stick to the stats here. Okay. okay. All right. It has fallen six months in a row, down 23% since August to a five-year low. Mm -hmm. And this is a big, big, big problem, guys. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you think there's such a... Uh, and again, when we, we can always see this through propaganda. Whenever there's a huge priority and a mandate from the government to put out pro-economy propaganda and silence people from talking badly about it. Remember what we saw in Chinese platforms on Weibo? People were getting warning messages from the platform saying, don't talk badly about the economy. Yeah then you know it's bad. It's kind of like when the COVID numbers happened, yes. right? When they just stopped counting immediately at a couple thousand or whatever it was, right? And then they're like, see, we're leading the world. And they yes. just stopped counting. Stop counting, yeah. Meanwhile, you go to China, you talk to anyone, like people are dying, dying left and right, dude. Yeah. My mom died, my this died, right? Yeah, my... but they just put a different cause of death yeah. on the certificate. So you have a situation where we're at a all-time low for any transparency coming out of China. And I would I would say we're headed to for a trend for less transparency forever. I mean, yeah. there's just no reason to deal yeah, with which, China at this which point. is upcoming story we have very very well illustrates by yeah. the way yeah yeah anyway. anyway so that that's that's the the pork yes, snout there's a, lot, um, there's a lot of follow-up crisis to there's a lot of follow-up to this later in the show yeah though. yeah you just can't hide some things no. you know they do try their best yeah. but sometimes it slips through because they didn't think about that no they can't hide the pork price right yeah. or some bureau of statistics will be reporting something that's unrelated to the economy but people can do a formula or a math a mathematic equation and figure out well that's actually representative of whatever disposable it's just income. like when they use the lights from satellite pictures Correct. to to america see the actual downgrade actual the GDP. economy right now um speaking of which yeah guys there's this nonsense that's going out at the moment, you see it constantly with these propagandists who are like USA versus China. Yeah. And they're like, China is amazing and it's in the future with high speed rails and all this crap. And here's America. And then they show like Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia yeah. with like drug addict zombies like falling over each other in piles of trash. You know what I mean? And Turns like, out it's a multi billion dollar push from the Chinese huge. government. It's now, insane. Now, it's not very often that we do this on this show, yeah. but we're going to recommend to you a video mm -hmm. that's on a different YouTube channel that you should go and watch. You know, it's a completely unrelated <laughs> YouTube channel to to my channel yeah. okay but it happens to be his channel that's right okay and he put this out yesterday and guys you know it's all good and well to go and recommend a thing for people to go and watch but this time is important please go and look at this video watch this video it. give it a chance okay here we're going to show you a little bit of a uh, um a, a preview of what you're going to see here it is Eventually. America is worse than China. Bullshit. <laughs> Claim number one, China is richer than the USA. Mm. False. But the reality is way suckier. There are fake websites that come up with completely false information as the first search result with the purpose of misguiding the public so that pro CCP social media accounts can use this. They're saying that the average Chinese person's pulling in like four grand a month. I don't think so. $339 per year, not even per month, per year. Yeah, please, what? Open, <laughs> low 86. Yeah, stop, stop there. Okay. Um, it's in the chat right now, yeah. that's why I said that. Um, that fake yeah. website, man, and wow. the reason the reason we found out about this is on Twitter. Yeah. Um, I can't even remember what I posted, but something about uh, the high speed rail, I think, and people were going on about like how much better it is, like the public transport. And I was like, yeah, but if it, it makes sense if you're poor, like when you've got a lot of poor people that can't afford their own transport, it's great to have public transport. Mm. It's not really necessary in most of the developed world. It's nice. Mm. It's not necessary. And then people are like, I just Googled it and the average salary in China is 4,000 something a month. I'm like, what? It's lit like, like, like what? Like four to five times higher than the already inflated statistic. Yeah. And this was, by the way, what Google was promoting. Yeah, when you go to that website yeah. and it's got a source, you click yeah. it, it's like not found. Yeah. It doesn't exist. It's not a source. It no. Literally, where did they get it? Yeah, that, that's... My source is that I made it the... God. I think the alarming thing wasn't that wasn't just some random site that I pulled up on Google. That was the, the number one. It's not just the first. It was promoted by Google as a snippet. Yeah. Google said this is like this is here's a platter. This is the official data, and yeah. it's made up. It's made up, and so that's why I, I was taken aback because, you know, having lived in China for fourteen years and knowing Chinese people and having Chinese family, I think it's absolutely preposterous that people would think 
that that amount of money is being earned by the average Chinese person because yes. it's not. Yes. The professionals I used to work with in Shenzhen, a first tier city that were doing office professional work, were earning like 6,000 RMB a month, like $1,000. The top you're talking about. Yeah. And Most college graduates right now in mm -hmm. a professional like master situation are making about $3,000 per year in China now. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I was just blown away that people were feeding me these statistics. I was like, where is this coming from? And when I Googled it, I was like, what the hell? So then I showed you and you're like, yeah, what? This is bullshit. And you made a video. But it's not just that. Yeah. I actually tackled the five biggest claims about China right yes. now. Um, and it's the, the ones that they're pushing through propaganda. Mm -hmm. And they're ones that are mostly trying to destroy the U.S. I figure this out. This yeah. campaign is made to destroy the Correct. U.S. It's nuts. And I refuted every single one. Yeah. And the reason I made that, um, and we talked about this, is... Yeah. We wanted a video where people could actually go and share that. Whenever you hear nonsense, yes. if you hear someone say like, "Did you? China's doing pretty well. Like, you know, we have this big drug problem and homeless problem, but China's got this." Send them this video. Yes. It's succinct and it's five points debunked with facts and sources in the description. Correct. That's why I wanted to make such a big deal about this. Yeah. Is I think it's a very important Thank you. thing to add to your toolkit because it's very hard to have discussions with people regarding China because yeah. they always consume this propaganda. Yeah. And the fact that the propaganda has leaked down into things like Google, mm -hmm. where the first search result that comes up is a made-up statistic. And TikTok. And, of course, TikTok. So a video like this is something that you can send to people, and you weren't sensationalist and no. crazy about it. You were just, this is it. This, this is, is the, the fact, stats. This is the stat. Blah, blah, blah. And the stats and that you quoted were even from the Chinese National yeah. Bureau of Statistics, yeah. not like no. some made-up think tank or something. It's real. So please share this video out and go and watch it because Thank it's you. incredibly important. Yeah, if you can right now, it's in the chat and description. If you open it yeah. in a new tab, you don't have to watch it right now, but keep it in a tab open, please. Yeah. If we can get, there's like 7,000 people here. If we can get you guys to, to do that, it'll help the algorithm a lot. Yeah, because this is one of those things I think it really deserves to get out there. Yeah, it's we're not trying mm. to do a, a please watch my video, you know, mm. oh YouTube's getting me down. Type it's thing. important. It's because it's mm. an important video, and I think the more people that see it, the better, because yeah. it's going to clear mm. away a lot of these stupid preconceived notions. It's in, I think it's important. It's like. Uh, it's a counter to mm. this really gross, bad, evil campaign. Yes. Yeah. All right. Check open it out. A new tab, please. Yeah. Go okay. check it out. Mm. And uh, watch it after the show. <coughs> and if you already watched it, watch it again. Or share it. Help me share it. Sure. That'd be great. Now, <laughs> here's another <laughs> CGB show. This, I love that this is promotion, by the way. Look. Wow, this is a place to see the whole city of Chongqing. Beautiful. Mm, interesting. <laughs> is it beautiful? It looks it like looks hell. It looks terrible. It looks disgusting. Yeah. You know what's this fast? By the way, can yeah. you go back to that for yeah, a few will. seconds? Mm -hmm. There is this fascination. I think that China <laughs> is still using 1970s logic. Yeah. In that, remember when skyscrapers were like a thing? Remember now, in the 1970s where film looked bad anyway? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the, yeah. you know, like 20s through the 70s, it's like skyscrapers were cool, right? Yeah. And I think they still think if they make a bunch of ugly, messy skyscrapers that people think that's attractive, it, yeah. it looks bad. Yeah. Skyscrapers are ugly. Good city planning and nice organic buildings and good design. That's what people like now. That's yeah. good aesthetics, right? Yeah, yeah. Building a bunch of polluted, tall buildings yeah. behind a, a dirty river that you can't even go in yeah. is not a aesthetic, aesthetically yeah, appealing. Yeah, no, I mean, again, just the fact that this is put out as propaganda... Um, it's just ridiculous. We all have eyes. We can all see that sky, how polluted and awful that is. Yeah. And here's <clears throat> here's the thing. Often they do these shots at night. Yeah. And so you see like a glistening LED full of bright light city and you can't see all the pollution, right? Yeah. So what did you do? You said like, look at how polluted it is. And then the mm -hmm. shills replied. It was funny. They were like... Uh, no, that's just fog. Because it's a mountain area. It's like, that's not fog, bro. What is... Yeah. So yeah. we're like, okay, let's check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, that was the whole point is mm. I, I told them like, this looks disgusting. What are you promoting this for? Is uh, something along those sure. lines. And then the person was like, you oh, don't no, know. The next picture. You, next picture. Next you, picture. You, you have never Thank been you. China before or something like that. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah I have. And I've been there. And yeah. I know that it's yes. Because yeah. so, I was in that city and it was awful. Yeah. So... I mean, just looking at it, right? You have 151 is the AQI. That's the air quality index, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's a relatively that's a good good, good. Slash moderate day for for, for that Chongqing, for yeah. that area, right? Mm -hmm. You have 
a situation where people will just make it up and be like, no, that's not pollution. It's totally fine. It's fog. It's fog. And it's like, no, I can go on check right now. And that's the Chinese government. That's censor. The Chi- yeah, which they definitely <laughs> mess with the numbers. They've been caught out in the past putting cotton in the sensors yes, and things. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things where you can actually see like... They had a huge amount of rain. You see that the top line there? Yeah, it's PM2.5. That's your average pollution. Yeah, and you can see it was freaking red, which is obviously unhealthy for days on Mm. end, right? Then they had heavy rainfall, which cleared it up for a little bit, and then it became red again. So we're not talking about a very nice, healthy place. It is literally pollution, and and it's polluted. 151 is pretty damn good for the places I lived in China. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. It says the max in that week was 180. Yeah. Yeah. And that's um, a, a rainy week, by the way. Yeah, it's yeah. a rainy week, so the rain's keeping the pollution down. So, I mean, you, if you go... Dude, there's times where it's 999. Oh, go, go to the next slide. Oh, you got You want to see what it looks like sometimes? Mm-hmm. I'll show you what the map looks like sometimes. Yes. This is what you're, This is what China is, you know, a lot of the year. This is yeah. what it is. It's truly apocalyptic. I mean, yeah. this is today, and Aksu today was 571. Yeah. Right, that's just like, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah, let's let's get on the same page. Yeah, I mean, look at that. That's disgusting, right? I I like the fact that I'll get us out of here. That um, you know, Japan's all nice and you know breathable air, and, and Japan's and not even a poster child of Taiwan's air quality. breathable air. You know, Taiwan's on the one side comes from it comes from China. China. Yeah, they don't have they can't. But Japan's you know, not even a good example, and yet look at how much better it is. Yeah, you know, it's dude. This pollution problem in China hasn't gone away. People constantly say, oh, that's in the past. China is committed to green technology, energy. Uh, one of my favorite things is China is the world leader in solar technology. That's why I brought it up. That was my claim number five in the video. It's like, yeah. what are you talking about? For China, China is the leader in green initiatives? What? Yeah, yeah exactly. This Is this green initiative? Now, the way they Looks get... Looks like red. Yeah, it, it is. And the, purple. Yeah, it's red and purple. The way they get away with this China's the leader in solar technology is China has produced the most solar panels, which is true. Yeah. But in producing those panels, they have generated so much pollution, it's not even funny. Yeah. To generate a solar panel, to manufacture that thing, to get what you need to create it, generates so much pollution. And just because they've made a whole bunch of them doesn't mean that they're working or plugged in. Or, you know, it's just like, hey, we made a lot. And remember, just because you make a lot of things doesn't mean you're the best at it. But that seems to be a, a, a thing that the Chinese government uses all the time. Yeah. Is like the most this. The world the, leader in remember making. It, because in that they propaganda made the most. clip that you put together in the beginning, the mm-hmm. Xi Jinping Sheikshinary. Yeah. Remember there, uh, Rick at one point says, They've, uh, Xi Jinping has created the world's largest education system. That's because it's got the most people. It's the most people. I mean, it's dumb. Now it's India, but yeah. still. I mean, come on. Really, yeah. guys? Yeah. Anyway, somebody yeah. had eagle eye. A good eagle eyes, by the way, in the chat. Yeah. What did they say? Um, they spotted a 975 up there near Beijing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, nine seventy five. Nine seventy five. Do you want to be? The, we've we've both the thing is, we've both experienced. I, it. The highest AQI I've been in, which was truly apocalyptic, was six hundred. Yeah. Right in in Western Inner Mongolia. When you went, remember we checked when you went, and it was like piercing your eyes. That was only four fifty. Yeah. Can you imagine what nine hundred is? Yeah, it's insane. It's <laughs> insane. I don't even know. Did you probably can't even walk against it because it's, it's solid. solid. You just like it's just a wall. Yeah, you just. You like have to part it, you know, and like get a Moses drag it. Exactly, that's what you do. Anyway, uh, stop believing the lies when people are going on about like, no, it's not pollution, it's just the weather, or it's, yes. oh, it's a foggy area. No, it's yeah. freaking pollution, and the sky don't lie, bro. Anyway. You know, you know, anyway, for that. yeah, we got to move on. Yeah, we, we got a schedule to keep. Yeah, it. so this uh, is interesting, right? This clip, yeah, this is um not very nice, is it? Valentine's no. Day, actually. In my, this clip. I've had a big environmental push these days. Yeah. Turned into a hippie. Yeah. So basic, go back to the factory part. Basically, yeah. there's a factory that put out uh, some pinkish purple smoke, right? Yeah, I'll get there. And obviously, people are going to take video of that in the area and be like, "What's going <laughs> yeah, on? What's this?" By the way, about? look at how polluted it already is. I mean, that, yeah, that's you can't even Chinese see city. the sky. Yeah. Yeah. So you have this like, oh, and by the way, it's on Valentine's Day, so this is like very festive. Yeah, this is very great, lovely. Think about it, Valentine's Day. It's kind of pink, you know. Yes. So hearts and love for I went, the environment. Yeah, I went through this, and I was like, what are they going to try to spin this as, right? Mm. So I went through the government notice, and they did put out a government notice because people were worried. Yeah, about people this. are like, what is this purple smoke everywhere? Yes. yes. 
Um, again, this is a it's while in 2021. Back. Yes. Yeah. But we, we just thought it was so Valentine's esque because yes. it was just Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was funny because the the government notice here says that well, don't worry, mm-hmm. right? I'll paraphrase here. Don't worry, it's just iron oxide and rhodium oxide, right? Yep. So I, I mean, I'm no chemist, right? But I'm I'm like certainly it's not good to breathe. Yeah, but they're like, rust, it's, they, right? they're saying it's harmless. But it's it's not just normal iron oxide. This is fumes in, that are being burned. Iron yeah. oxide and rhodium oxide, right? So yeah. I'm like, what do you mean it's not? They said it's not toxic. The Chinese government said that yeah, to yeah. the people. So I, just a quick cursory Google, you know, and you can look at this. And it says exposure to iron oxide fumes can cause metal fume fever. This is a flu-like illness with symptoms of metallic taste, fever and chills, aches, chest, tightness, and cough. Prolonged or repeated contact can discolor the eyes and causing permanent iron staining. This is from NewJersey.gov. Wow, so you can actually get discolored. Does it mean you get like purple eyes? Maybe it looks really cool. Yeah, I was just thinking. Remember I made that edit of you. You had purple yeah, eyes. You yeah. had iron oxide. But I think poisoning. the whites of your eyes would be affected, not yeah, the That's iris. absolutely correct. Mm. Um, harmful if inhaled. Affects respiratory system. Now, uh, by the way, I looked this up. It doesn't look horribly devastating, but it's yeah. not harmless. It's not no. completely harmless. The government's like, it's fine. Totally yeah. fine. Yeah, don't just worry don't worry about it. it. It's totally okay. And you had in that, you know, you, you look up... Um, uh, what it was from, and I figured it out. This is from arc welding. It's mm-hmm. like a probably an industrial level of arc welding happening, probably, or, an, yeah. or or welding type thing, because this is what the gas byproduct is: is iron oxide being burned off. Yeah. Um, you look at rhodium, right? Rhodium, all rhodium compounds should be regarded as highly toxic and carcinogenic, and it's like. You know, yeah. when you heat it, may emit toxic rhodium oxide fumes under fire conditions. Again, this isn't just rhodium oxide, which is probably relatively harmless. You're yeah. burning it. Sure. You're just releasing it out into the atmosphere, just like old Chinese factories just release every rubbish thing that they can think of. I just love the catch-all. Like, when you have a government with no transparency and they can say or do whatever they want. Yes. And no one's allowed to dissent and there's no outside sources or anything like this. Then you get the government that says, totally fine, and they hand it out. Yeah, and That's course. why you have this cancer rate like you have in China. And it's insane. Whole villages we met of people that get cancer from the yeah. groundwater and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty dire situation. Yeah. So... Um, again, if anyone tries to tell you that China's leading the world in green you know, technology and all that, it's rubbish. They're actually destroying the world more than any other country right now, at present. You can see, again, they twist the words, it's headlines like China plans or China has um, you know, got a plan in motion that's going to be put together or something. It's always about the future. It's never about now. No. Because they can kick the can down the road as much as they want. Yeah. And people don't question them as long as they shut them up with a little, don't worry, we're, we're planning to do something. That's right. And so if you were to look right now, you'd see that China is causing the greatest amount of damage to the environment in the entire world. Yes. It yes. really is yep. in a huge way. And by orders of magnitude, more than any other country ever has. And, yes. you know, we can't just let them get away with it all the time. Environmental people, where are you? At least be honest about yeah, it. Yeah, where are you? Greta Thunbergs of the world worrying about, like, where Palestine are you? and stuff. Like, what are you I'm doing? I'm so sorry. <laughs> they should sing that. Yeah. And it's I like, mean it. If you care about the environment, go care about the environment is what I'm saying. And care about what China is doing to the environment. Yes. Anyway. Uh, we've got to pick and choose what stories we're going to cover here because we're way we? over schedule. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. We're not going to pick and choose. And, and that is the fact that we've got our Monday show. Guys, it's a VIP show. This is what you missed. <laughs> this is hilarious. Give that interior a little spray. Give down. it a power wash. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> and he taught his son to do the same. Yeah, like father, like son, you know. Man, this audio is deep fried. It's so deep fried. Yeah. I love it. This, this guy, guy can is, herd goat stuff, man. He's, he's doing good. everything within his ability. This is the most fabulous like, goose, goose ever. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? This is how you attract a crowd in rural China. <laughs> this is rural ingenuity. It's pretty epic. Yeah. Yeah, so um, if you're curious about that, that's our VIP show, Xiaoban Ho, we have every Monday. Super fun. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcast. If you have the means, we'd love to see you there on Monday. Yes, that um, particular episode was about rural ingenuity. So all the, the stuff that people do in the countryside for fun slash try to make ends meet. And it's yes. fast. It's absolutely fascinating. It is. It's very funny. So anyway, every Monday we have that show, except this coming Monday, we won't. We're moving it to Tuesday. It's President's we? Day. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Because President's Day and, you know, we'll the honor, thing is. Honor um, the presidents. 
Yeah, for some reason, Seymour just really loves presidents. So I do. You cannot disturb him on President's Day. He's yeah. got a wall of all the pictures of the presidents, you know? It's kind of like the last Stands like this for the whole day. You you are <laughs> celebrating the last member Veterans Day. You absolutely loved that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm more of a President's Day kind yeah. of guy. You're more of a Veterans that's, Day kind of guy. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so uh, it'll be on Tuesday instead of Monday this week. But uh, yes. yeah, join it if you have the means. We'd love to see you there. Now it's time for us to move on to Wumao Corner. And this is where we talk about the haters all the nonsense they get up to um and uh well we're talking about vw for some reason in the wumao corner today well it's because they have uh done a very wumao thing potentially Mm -hmm. allegedly allegedly what is this picture by the way so this is actually really funny you've probably heard by now and if you haven't uh vw is in a little bit of hot water because allegedly according to a report from adrian zen's they have been using forced labor on one of their test tracks in Xinjiang. Well, to build the test track. To build the test track. So yeah. in Western China, there's a genocide going on uh, mm. that the Chinese government is perpetrating. Millions of Uyghurs have been put in forced, la- uh, forced labor camps and also re-education camps. Yes, stripped and, of their culture and their religion and their language. Yes, and it has been proven that forced labor is being used in China. Yes. Uh, unpaid forced labor of Uyghurs, basically as slaves, right? Yeah. The Chinese government doesn't see them as human. They want them to be homogenized with the Han Chinese people. Yeah. Now... There have been a lot of uh, acts and laws written, especially by the administration in the U.S., current administration that wants uh, reduced dependency or no dependency on forced labor from Xinjiang, right? Obviously, right? The problem is, there's a joint partnership of SAIC, Volkswagen, in Xinjiang, which is going to be, which is going to be a hot hot button area to be having a car factory with all that tantalizing forced labor around. So VW was accused of having, uh, using forced labor in the past. They did their own independent version of a audit to figure it out. And they said, and it was in December of 2023, they said, no, we're good. We checked. It was actually, uh, I believe it was a third party audit, but they, I guess they organized it. Anyway, long story short, they said, no, we're good. Yeah, no forced labor here. Nothing to see here. But what I wanted to, to say before we get into the actual report was this is like the official f- like factory screenshot, like the picture that they use. But I noticed something very weird about the building and the greenery. <laughs> the, those hedges are not real. Yes. That's not a real hedge. So this actually I zoomed this in. one here, look at this. This yeah. is not a real hedge. You zoomed in? <laughs> yes. So look at this. Okay. Like why is no I, I saw this picture going around in mass media. Why are you guys not making fun of this? They like sliced the building out. That looks like a CG <laughs> building, dude. That yes. doesn't look real. Yeah, so I'll show you the real one in a second. Okay. But I zoomed into the edges so you could see these. Yeah. <laughs> That is the worst Photoshop That's I've ever so seen. That's so bad. That's like the replicate tool and you hold it down. Yeah, and then you add a shadow or whatever. Yeah. That looks so bad. Look at the grass. Yeah, look at where that. it intersects on the building up there. Like, what's going <laughs> they on? They literally use the erase tool and then they turn the uh, feathering. Yeah, up. exactly. Do you, do you think that VW doesn't have enough money to hire a real graphic artist? No, this is what happens, though, when you ch- chabu do it. Yeah. You know, you do a half ass. So this, this is the real building. <laughs> look at the, the, the okay, so you see where that fake hedge was, right? Right. It's pretty much where I'm sitting. If yeah. I get a so actually, there's just a pile of trash there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks good like job. A doom wad file. <laughs> <laughs> it does, <laughs> guys. China is the land of shortcuts and facades, and yeah. this once again just proves it. Never mind hashtag the sky don't lie. Yeah, we Look should at that. Th- put that in there too. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. But I did a more couple comparisons. Oh, you did? I didn't see anyone pointing this out. Okay, like, cool. Like what the, the juxtaposition here. So this is this is the real one, and that's the sort of on the website one. Yes. Okay. This is this is a mo- the one on the right is a modern image that was taken by journalists, by the way. Yeah. So this is what you see when you're actually there. Yeah, I love how in it's always blue skies and greenery. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you look at the greenery in that fake photo, it's literally they took a bunch of pot pots. plants and put them on the like <laughs> concrete over there. Looks they literally like, like, this, like is Lowe's. A, this isn't green enough. <laughs> Let's put some pot plants out it's like there. like a Lowe's parking lot. Anyway, after the photo shoot, they like let it all degrade and throw the extra poisonous chemicals on the grass because look, there's none left. <laughs> it's just like barren soil, scorched yes. earth. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let's salt the land. Let's salt the land. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna read uh, read this. So Sky this report was in a business newspaper yeah. called Handelsblatt, and that's a German language newspaper. Mm-hmm. It said the independent researcher Adrian Zenz has found evidence that the use for the use of forced labor in the construction of the test track in Turpan mm-hmm. in Xinjiang, which is operated by a subsidiary 
Sierra, the joint venture, S-A-I-C, and Volkswagen, yeah. right? Psych. So, so in China, you have to know. Well, psych. Nice. In China, you have to know that if you want to have a car brand, you have to have a 51% ownership for the Chinese government to own it from their state subsidiary, and then you have to be the 49% owner of your half. Yes. You can't be, uh, you can't own your entire all company. All like Toyota, they, that's like Feng Tian yep. They have all these like, remember we used to do Suzuki's? Yep. Suzuki Lingmu, it's a joint venture. Yep. You know what, is, what isn't a joint venture is Tesla. Ah, that's bucks the system. That's the only one. That's why I think there's some art, there's some some loopholes there because of how much manufacturing they do in China. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, the fact of the matter is that's that is probably sus. why you see on Twitter, mm, you know, Chinese propaganda is kind of favored and being pushed. Get into that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this little clip here, you can just play. Mm -hmm. Get us out of there. Okay. German auto giant uh, is is under fire, right? In construction yeah. of the test track in Xinjiang. Yeah. So. Uh, the evidence from German scholar revealed that a joint venture from SAIC Volkswagen's test track uh, was built using transferred Uyghur laborers. And so there's a key feature in this. Mm -hmm. um, Volkswagen said on Wednesday it was in talks with its joint venture partner. I love their non-speak here. Watch this. VW said it has seen no evidence of human rights violation in connection with the project. Well, obviously you're not going to see it if they hide it. <laughs> but vowed to investigate any new information that came to light, right? Mm-hmm. See how this happened. VW has long come under scrutiny over its factory in Urumqi in Xinjiang, which opened in 2013. Mm -hmm. An external audit commissioned by VW last year found no evidence of forced labor. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Turpan test track was not part of the audit. Oh, okay. Do you there see how go. this happened? Mm -hmm. So the reason this is getting a lot of um, press yes. from Adrian Zenz's report is that, well, this conveniently wasn't in the audit. No, just that part wasn't in the audit. Would it be the first time and again this is alleged would it be the first time that vw has betrayed our trust <laughs> no let's, yeah, they just sucked don't maybe they? we just shouldn't look at anything kind of 1940s you know when it comes to vw either oh yeah they don't have a great track record no, no pun intended the no. tour upon track <laughs> record <laughs> yeah um by the way it's now being called in a quote no longer investable uh this is adrian zen's quote in my opinion volkswagen has to publicly announce that they're going to get out as soon as they can so we'll we'll see what happens. You know, here's the thing. Um, I hate to say it, but VW is heavily entrenched in China, and I don't see them ever behaving because yeah. we went to this very interesting place. It was like a German restaurant that was set up opposite a VW factory on the outskirts of Shenzhen in like Long. Where was it? Longhua. Yeah, I believe it was Longhua. Uh, so, yes, yes, yes. Or Longgang, one of the Longgang, two. Longgang, one of those things. Um, anyway. It's a long something. Remember, you had the long Ooh. guys. It wasn't a loon something. It was a long something. Anyway, uh, and we were sitting there, and there were engineers and stuff from VW, and that was like their own private restaurant basically set up for them. Yeah, it was like a palace. Yeah. There's no one there. No, it's just... And they've got such a great thing going on there in China, and the VW, VW loves China. Yes. So they very happy to bend rules or whatever just to stay there. That's true. By the way, people are going nuts in the chat because they want to know what this mass shooting thing is about. Let's oh, get yeah, straight yeah, to yeah. it. We'll get to it. All right. Now, here's the thing. We heard about this and uh, we we discussed doing a breaking episode about this. Yes. When the news first, mm. you know, arrived to us. And that happened, you know, on the, the, the 10th, was it? I believe it was on uh, the 10th. Yes. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> The only people that were reporting this were Falun Gong Media and a couple of other, um, you know, places which you couldn't really say were trustworthy. All right, it's a very difficult thing to cover, so we didn't want to be jumping on a bandwagon and doing uh, misinformation or spreading something that wasn't true. So we've been behind the scenes trying to verify this thing the entire time. Okay, and we can't. And we still can't. No, but. The more and more we tried to dig, the more and more it was hidden, and the more yeah. and more it made us realize that it's probably true, at least to a certain degree. To a certain extent. Yeah. yeah. So here's the gist of it, okay? On New Year's Day in China, allegedly, and I'm going to say allegedly this time because we don't know the truth, uh, a, 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 a SWAT team member, member I almost said a twat team member, but a SWAT team member. Huh? A disgruntled, well. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. A disgruntled Depending SWAT, on what he did. <laughs> yeah, a SWAT member who was fired or something um, committed a mass shooting which in killed Shandong. in Shandong, which killed sort of 21 people and injured scores of other people, okay? 
The the story has morphed a few times. Yeah. Now it was like a disgruntled dude who went to go and kill a, two families, and then when the emergency crews arrived, he shot them too. And you know, so there's a lot of different variations, a lot of rumors. It's starting to get a bit crazy. The rumors, right? But one thing that we can verify is that there was a complete media blackout. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because the more we tried to dig into this and find out about it, the we'll less. Just play it. Yeah. the less we were able to find out. Yeah, so, so what we found out was there's lots of WeChat messages mm -hmm. and there were organic messages of people being like, what the hell's going on, mm -hmm. right? Like what's going on around here? Like yeah. this, and there, why are there people, uh, Chinese officials that are standing outside of the entrance to this village, right? Yeah. What's going on? Hey, somebody says, hey, I just saw tons of SWAT team people run around. It was crazy. It was yeah. chaos. People yeah. are like, don't, don't take pictures, don't take videos, you know, that kind of stuff. And so we're like, well, we don't know if this di dude went on a mass shooting spree, but what yeah. we do know is that something massive happened in this village. Yeah, something bad happened enough that it, uh, you know, obviously got a lot of attention from what appeared to be armed forces, and the whole area was blocked off, and a an complete media blackout happened. Yes. yes. Right? Like I said, I asked. Uh, quite a few of my Chinese friends yeah. who are still in China, a lot of them didn't know anything about this. No, most people didn't. But some of them were like, uh, you know, it might be true. I mean, it's something they, happened. They were like, there was this supposed official document that was released, you know, from so, the government. So local here's government the deal. There. Mm -hmm. Despite that, there are cached websites yes. that have been removed mm -hmm. um, that still come up on Google search results, right? Yeah. And they show that there was an incident, a homicide, yeah. right? That happened here. Perhaps over 10 people killed in these reports, right? Mm -hmm. Again, subsequently removed. So there was something that was going on. Something happened. It's um, just impossible to tell to what extent and exactly what it was. Yeah. And again, that's the problem with China is we can't say, yes, this 100% happened because we're not that. We're not, we, we like to have some credibility and we like to yeah. keep all of our sources in the description so you yeah. know what we're talking yeah. about. And this kind of thing is impossible to tell because they do such a good job these days of covering Censoring everything and covering up. everything up. It's hard to get any info out. Especially at that time of the year. Let me just rewind there. Um, remember, the Chinese New Year is the most important holiday, okay? And it's supposed to be, the, it's the time that the Chinese government invests the most into yeah. making sure yeah. it's... It's um, a, a non-event full mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. If bad news were to break out during Chinese New Year, it yeah. would it would just spread around the country, and people would see it as a bad omen. It would yeah. really upset everything. Yeah. So, if there was any time of year that the Chinese government would hyper suppress something yes, bad, it would be during Chinese New Year. So, um, educated guess here, guys. Something bad did happen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Something pretty Absolutely. bad happened. And they just shut what, it down. To what extent, we can't tell you. It's so hard. And we don't want to be the guys who who want to tell you, yes, absolutely, this happened. Because mm. we can't verify that. And we always try our best to verify things before yes. we you know, put our names behind it. But something bad happened in Shandong on Christmas, uh, sorry, not Christmas, on New Year's Day uh, that the Chinese government doesn't want anyone to know about. Correct. Yeah. So. Moving on. Moving on. By the way, we do have copies of that. We've been sent copies of that so-called official document. Yeah. Going through it, though, there wasn't an official stamp on it. And it's, it's hard. Ugh. That's why we didn't even include it. Here, here's the thing, though. Um, we will continue to keep an eye on this. And if any truth ever does come out yeah. of the situation, we'll definitely report mm. correctly on it. I just saw so so many disingenuous people slash outlets just jumping on this. And it's like, yeah. that's how you destroy the trust of your audience, yeah, right? Yeah. You don't, don't do that. You can't jump out and say, this definitely happened, you know? No, mm. no. Yeah. Anyway. Something did happen, though. Yes. Whatever it sure. was. Yeah, hopefully it'll come to light. Yes, so uh, this is a super quick thing. Mexico overtakes China as the leading source of goods imported by USA. So when I said there's a follow-up to the pig thing, just pause it there. Yeah. Um, the pig thing, yes, people are div divesting from China, and it's gotten to the point where no one in their right mind would think that any country would surpass the trade partner uh, of, of China to the US, right? Yeah, yeah. And Mexico has done such a thing. Now, there is a lot of speculation that these are Chinese companies operating in Mexico, but... It's, it's not speculation. A, there really are. No, no, no. But know, that's contributing to this. It's contributing, yeah. But it's not, that's not completely... Uh, uh, irrelevant. Irrelevant, right? <laughs> it says, China seems to be divorced from the rest of the world, uh, said Steve Sosnick, uh, chief strategist at Inter Interactive Brokers. Part of the lack of equity response um, is that the global economy is doing okay without China. Yeah. 
Uh, prior reactions occurred when China was a bastion of growth in a shakier world, right? So you're looking at a situation now where people are okay to to think about uh, other alternatives, right? Also, a lot of uh, government response here was to, uh, I believe it was called like friendly investing or something. It's like invest in countries that are close and fr and have friendly relationships to you, yeah. not countries that are adversaries. It's it's always boggled my mind because China's halfway across the world yeah. where you've got yeah. Mexico just across the border in America. Mm. So logistically anyway, you don't need to be sending these ships polluting no. the world and all this stupid back and forth and dealing with... Um, you know, un unfortunately, an irresponsible country like China, where yeah. they take shortcuts and yeah. they pollute and damage the earth more than a responsible country would. Yeah. Not that I'm calling Mexico responsible, but at least they're on your back door and you can keep an well, eye. Well, we have friendly, friendly relationships. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, um, also, just how about make your own crap at home? <laughs> <laughs> that well, that's happening too. Yeah, manufacturing is returning. I, uh, and I'm all for that. And again, there's a there's an argument because I often get into arguments about how China's polluting the world, and everyone's like, "Well, they're making all your goods. What do you expect? Don't let them move their manufacturing to responsible countries, because it's been proven time and time again that the Chinese government and Chinese state-owned enterprises and Chinese factories take shortcuts. They use banned chemicals. They put a huge hole in the ozone layer recently, for crying out loud. They steal trillions of dollars in intellectual property. Yeah, they steal all the intellectual property, and they ruin the environment by just dumping chemicals and destroying the earth and doing all this stuff. Why They're not invest in Vietnam, India? Yes. Responsible countries that actually do not stand there and say, screw you and your yeah. laws and screw you and your regulations, we'll do what we want. Yeah. How about a responsible country that's like, oh, okay, we, okay, we understand we'll that by dumping these chemicals, we're hurting you know, the, the environment. How about yes. we do it responsibly? That's right. Deal with a responsible country that doesn't pollute as much as China. For sure. Yeah? Moving on. Anyway, yeah. We'll move on. Fine. So this is, we're going to have to be very brief here. Mm -hmm. Basically, there have been, there's a, a report that, it, this is really important, but I think you guys can just open the link and read through You've it. You've got a link? Yeah, I do. Okay, but give us a gist. Uh, yeah, so the gist is basically the Meta and Microsoft and all these other companies have found a just a sheer disturbing amount of Chinese propaganda accounts, right? And they're not just propaganda accounts that are saying China good, we are great, look at Chinese culture. We're talking about accounts that are doing very specific influence campaigns to destroy the USA. Well, yeah, to divide the public. Divide the public and not even to insert China into the dialogue sometimes. Yeah, just to cause chaos. Yes. So that China so they'll, can- it'll, They'll you know, endorse profit. certain politicians, right? Yeah. Uh, just like Russia. Russia and China do this thing where they somehow, people in America start to think, oh, maybe they're on our side because they're aligning with my political viewpoint. But what you don't understand is they do both sides, right? Yeah. They do whatever is sowing division to cause chaos, and they're yeah. doing targeted uh, campaigns to do this. And it's yeah. super, super unnerving. It almost seems insurmountable. But the, yeah. the, the takeaway from this, and by the way, there's a lot of good information coming out of this, but Meta was doing a good job. Microsoft's been doing a good job. X, Twitter. After, mm -hmm. you know, used to be uh, collaborating with these companies to interface with the government, interface with the other social media companies and say, hey, we found this big threat. Yeah. After Elon Musk took over, they, they've pretty much stopped doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, that's not conjecture. That's mm -hmm. just true. Um, in fact, they found these huge swaths of them. They would look at these accounts that have influence campaigns that were removed on these other platforms like Meta yep. or Google or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they found that those influence campaigns and those accounts proliferated and stayed and, and flourished with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is a new change. This happened. This is happening now. Twitter has become a hotbed. X has become a complete hotbed where uh, propagandists and fake accounts run by adversarial countries are flourishing. Yeah. It's bad. It's truly bad. I mean, it's just an unfortunate thing. I know a lot of people had a lot of hopes uh, for Twitter when Elon Musk took over because... You know, they thought that it would go a certain way and that there wouldn't be as much political bias from the yeah. left, you know, that type of thing. But the unfortunate thing that nobody really seemed to realize is that uh, Elon Musk is beholden to China. He has so much of his entire fortune and companies and stuff tied up in China. Of course, he's not going to be combative towards China on uh, Twitter. In fact, he's going to allow them to walk all over him and the rest of the world on Twitter because of his dealings with China. In fact, yeah, we've seen just the- it's a politics the, aside, you know? The careers of these propagandists from, in, in these fake accounts, mm -hmm. running anti-America influence campaigns to make people hate each other yep. that are being promoted on the front page, mm. that are being thrust in front of your face. Yeah. It's, tr it's information warfare. Yeah. 
And it's it's gotten to a point now where I just can't, in my right mind, recommend anyone to to go and participate in that or support this company. It's a it's a hive of absolute nonsense, disinfo, propaganda. You know, here's the thing: uh, a lot of people's you know day daily life is tied into Twitter. Yeah. Whether specifically people that do any kind of journalism, they're always on Twitter. You can um, play some of the other slides. Yeah. And so. If you if you do have to use Twitter and it, you know you just have to realize that what you're seeing on there if you see things that are like really trying to sow division being very pro China you know what they are you have to see it for what it is yeah it's kind of like you can go into a restaurant and say half the dishes are poison right yeah if you know which dishes are poison you can order the good stuff and just avoid the poisonous dishes yes. right and that's what you got to deal with with Twitter you just got to look and see what's poison yes right and avoid it so I actually highly recommend everyone read that article it's on Washington Post it was really good and you mm -hmm. know what's great about that article is, is everything is clickable in there so yeah. all the evidence for everything was in there and it was yeah. really shocking it's in um, the description like shame like on everything X. else shame on Twitter yeah for sure stop um, stop being such a uh, CCP shill yeah platform um anyway russia china and cam or china russia and cambodia on the top list of regimes we talk about uh, national transnational repression yes it's when a foreign government harasses people in different countries across borders yep. because they're dissidents against the government right it's mm -hmm. when they're harassing those people that's what transnational means it doesn't yes. mean something else no um china and russia and cambodia are on the top list of those regimes that do that they go after people that they don't like they go yep. after people that are saying things that they don't want that's uh, why they had 50 plus uh chinese police stations operating abroad to go and harass chinese correct anti-ccp yes. dissidents right yeah Russia does the same, Cambodia does the same. Just to put this in perspective, I want people to know there's other countries that do that too. We got Myanmar and Turkmenistan as well. It's not just China that does this. This is a, kind of a ragtag group of these countries that are banding together to be like, how can we be more oppressive abroad? How can we silence people? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, somebody said something I didn't like, yeah. so I want to silence them. In a foreign and country. The thing is, if it's in their own country, they can just literally take them, yeah. Yeah. disappear them, kill them, poison them, do yeah. whatever they do. But when they're abroad, they can't silence them and mm. they get mad. So they're like, how the hell do we silence that person? So they figure out all these dastardly ways. And there's a big uptick in this. Yeah. Uh, so just bringing that to everyone's attention. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, moving on, we have a Q&A to oh, hang yeah. out with you guys. It's finally time for Yamcha, guys. This is our Q&A segment where, uh, well, we answer your questions and you question our answers. So uh, let's get to it. It's Friday after all. Time to loosen the tie. Relax. Um, we get to play this or you get to watch this live now and also over the weekend on Monday we remove it from the show yes uh, so let's get to it Turd Ferguson thank oh, you very much oh and stay awesome if you're not sticking around yes mm. uh, Alex thank you very much oh yeah thank you very much 